I've got terrible cameras. Fixed. Wait. You fixed it? I think so. Who do you think you are by just touching something on the table and walking up and saying it's fixed? Yep. You fucking smart ass. Did you really fix it? What was it? What'd you just touch? It wasn't on. Looks like you turned it on. What? <laughs> fucking! If, if this red light is blinking, it's Yeah, I know that. Alright, I'm a moron. Yes. Well, at least there's nothing new. <laughs> Got it. Thanks, Betsy. What would I do without Betsy, Michael? That would any of us do. That's what everybody says. Constantly. See, Betsy? You want it. Wait, needed? Wanted sounds wrong, right? Mm, Finger somewhere. in the mouth kind of a thing. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, what else did I see? I saw a lot of stuff. Maybe watch movies, that thing. That awards thing. Have you seen Get Out? Yeah, I saw that ages ago. Yeah. That's a great movie. All sorts of great movies. You know what I won't watch? Pacific Rim. Uprising? There's a new one, yep. and I think that that's a little unfair to the world. I mean, are we that stupid? The world is. That's mm. the problem. Okay, well then Pacific Rim 2. Well, it's, that's what I'm saying. It's not just America, it's the world. Or is it 3? I think it's 2, right? I mean, you're in a machine, and you go, Rah! and you throw a punch in a room, and that robot throws that punch. I mean, this is some throwaway shit. It really is. Uh-oh, it's the kaiju. Yeah, but they... You just have to get... One guy just explains their whole thing. They're, they've they adapted. Who, who's that comedian guy that gets to say that? He scores. He's the comic relief, right? They've adapted! Here we go. Wait. <laughs> Oh, n bitch! There's nothing. Stop. There's nothing gayer. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's always sunny, guy. Charlie. Day. You know what's funny is that this, like, this has already been so many things. My kid has watched a thing on Nickelodeon that was like several years old. That's kids who can pretend to they move and then the robot moves. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah. The end. Well, and then there's always something that they have to fight that's like, they're like, 1% better than. So it like beats them up and they're like, oh my God, all hope is lost. But wait, maybe if we all combined our... I just, and I just don't understand how some of them get like scrapes on their eyebrow like they got punched in the face even though they're in a robot machine. No, that doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense at all, Michael. I didn't know that happened. They got that cuts on their brow and shit from, from getting punched by the sea creature. No, it did seems like if you can go, if you can develop these things, you could you could get rid of that element. Right? Yeah. Put a helmet on if you're getting a lot of cuts on your face. Yeah, I agree with that. It's ridiculous. Absolutely yeah. ridiculous. And uh, is that Clint Eastwood's son? Is it? Scott Eastwood? Uh, well, I mean, that's the future, man. If you're a star, a good-looking guy, and you're an actor in the future, you get to uh, hang out with, you know I mean, fake robots on the CGI thing. That's your shit. Congratulations, buddy. Yeah, it's a popcorn movie. I'll so to shoot Mexicans, you hang out in virtual reality. I'll sit through that with my kid. I've seen worse. Yeah, no, that's exactly what that is. That is one of those things where it's like, ooh, oh, ooh, what happened? But yeah, my son would gladly sit there for that explosion. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with this next phase of movies that my son is interested in and putting aside, like, uh, you know, talking rabbits. I think all you need... Oh, okay, I see where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's all about... That's how all those move. They need those. Boo, boo, boo. Oh, shit. That's like half the entertainment. It's really loud in movie yeah. theaters these days. It's too loud in movie theaters. Oh, come on, Michael. What happened to your well, no, rock and roll it's, roots? It's not It's not me. It's like you just see things through your kid's eyes. Like he wanted, First, he didn't want us to do close because it was visually overwhelming. So then we'd sit all the way in the back, but then we'd be by the speakers. And I'm like, yeah. he's like, well, this is too loud. And I'm like, hey, I see your angle. You're like which is what he was so then we sit in the middle and now I'm like it's still very 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 loud yeah I'm just saying I think I think we could accomplish 
what we need to accomplish at, you know, a couple decibels lower. Why don't you bring some uh, sound affecting okay. ear okay. things? Okay. I should have to. I feel like if I'm going to sign up for like the, the 3D, you know, like 3D or, I think not 3D I have to, or XD, I think we should have like the, this is the really, really loud one. And you know, this is just like loud enough. Get the job done. Oh, have man. movie theaters gotten louder or is it, or have I gotten weaker? I've, you've got weaker. I think they've gotten louder. Still got weaker. I mean, have you kind of thought that in theaters before? No, it's only since... It's a new thing, entirely. It, it's only since he was like, I don't want to sit where it's going to be really, really loud, and then I would try to move us to where we'd be first, you know, right in the middle, so we're furthest away from the walls, and then shit happens, and I'm like, wow, this is... He's kind of got a point. I don't think he... There's lots of things that he does where I'm like, you're being a major fucking pussy right now. I think that about him about three times a day, and that's not one of them. That's all. No, but I'm talking about you. Not your fucking little kid that's got sensitive ears I think he's right I'm Yuri sorry. is you're saying I never, I never I mean I can't I've remember. never even noticed that there's a part of the theater that's louder I can't remember the last time I went to okay wait the last time I went to a movie theater without him I went to see The Phantom Thread where people barely talk the loudest thing that happens in that is fucking needles going through fabric wow I, no I'm sorry spoiler alert the loudest thing that happens is a lady buttering toast mmm horny shit Man, that sounds like a great movie. You're really course. pumping that it's up. Fucking terrible. Needle through thread and buttering toast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are two of the these are two highlights. Of, yeah. Yeah. I've already mentioned that they cook mushrooms, so you've pretty much seen the Phantom Thread. Yeah, hey, oh, the, oh, and that's the highlight, right? Yeah, that is the highlight. The, the mushroom the, is the the, the, the banger. Right. The movie, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know about the um, sound thing, but I also think that I don't know about the sound thing because I'm deaf. You know, I have the loudest cans out of anybody in the studio, oh, so yeah. that means pr- I pr- I probably don't sense it. Because I'm fucking numb to it. That's pretty good that you still have ears. They're okay. They're really good when there's no competing sound. That's where I'm at. Yeah, I like, don't. I'm the one if we're in bed and my kid's like, Mama. I'm the one who'll wake up for that. But if I'm doing the dishes and you try to talk to me, just cool. Just fucking talk yourself silly. I don't know uh. what you're talking about. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It could be worse. It could be worse because I have I have I have rocked and rolled for several decades now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I can't tell if the sounds on or not, Betsy. Um, the fights happened, and they were very, very exciting, and a lot of things happened, mm-hmm. and I'm very, very thirsty. So I'm going to have to take a break and come back to explain to you what happened in the UFC this weekend. Do you want to take a full or a half? Just a half. Okay. Thanks, Betsy. Well, it looked like the one mic was working. I can't see what they're saying anymore. Oops. I tried to write something and I fucked myself. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Fuck. Sound. Okay, so go back to YouTube. How do you get this off so I can see what people are saying again? Mm. <laughs> How do you send that? What's the, what if you hide the chat? I don't know, I don't do a lot of YouTube no. chatting. I mean, you basically need to get back to a keyboard. Just fucking reload it. Shit. Oh, you forgot you told me about the burrito. Uh, <laughs> we had lunch on top of lunch. Yeah. I haven't had <laughs> breakfast and I've got two lunches. I'm ready to go, baby. There you go. Sounds working. Sounds okay. good. Okay. Thank you.
playing right now. It's awesome. New or just that fucking hip thing? Just well, my sciatic nerve is just like ringing inside my spine. <coughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, the UFC was this weekend and I scrutinized the living piss out of it and I've got a lot to say about this one. I, first of all, as you guys know, especially if you're um, a Alice Mania guy that has been to a Alice Mania once or twice, you would know that one time when I used to drink that I might have had a discussion with C.B. Dalloway about Mayhem Miller and C.B. Dalloway. I thought he was going to beat me up, but I was like... I, I don't know why. I, I don't know why. I must have had enough to drink where I was like, well, I'm going to fuck. You're going to scrap go. I was full level moron. I was defending myself. He was trying to intimidate me. And I was like, I don't give a fuck who you are, dude. And he was like, I'm going to fucking smack you. And I was like, go on. And I think I drank enough where I was like, it's going to be a fair fight. Not realizing that I was probably about to die. But anyway. That having been said. Uh, Hector Lombard kicked him in the head or punched him in the face. Um... On the bell, and if you look at the fucking fight for the belt of Holly Holm versus that bitch, Jabroni, Jabronis, who fucking punched her the bell twice, this guy gets ejected, Michael. Immediately ejected, loses the fight. The refs of the of the UFC, the rest of, uh, it seems like the refs of the UFC, maybe it's the limelight or something, shit the bed more than anywhere else. Like, I watch fights, King of the K... They shit the bed. A lot. I think it's boxing. I think boxing has the boxing refs and they send the boxing refs and they shit on their thing. Because here's another one. Um, Brian Call Caraway, he fucking won that fight. And they took that away from him. Straight up, he won that fight. Split decision, lost. Split decision, my balls. Not, and, then, and then they got to say, Caraway just broke up with his girlfriend. Now she's pregnant to another guy. And I'm like, wow. In the... You know what I mean? Like, well, at least that goes both ways. Since uh, what Bodie Miller got killed for saying that that one skier may have been operating at a disadvantage since she just had a wedding. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everybody knows that's stressful. Anyway, um, I what else? I thought that yeah, no, I thought it was very, very funny to watch CB Delaware go what on a stretcher over and over again. Because I almost didn't believe that. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, John Dotson beat that guy, and he beat him very well. Um, okay, here's my next one here. So we've got Alex. We got Mackenzie Dern, who apparently everybody wants to fucking butt lick, and Ashley Yoda, who I don't know what the deal is with spray tan, but can somebody tell her she's gone too far? It's too far. You know, you're from Temecula. I've lived in Temecula. Yeah, it's hot there, 
But don't act like that's fucking real. And what? You know what I mean? Like. Oh, fuck me, skirt. I don't know, dude. She, look, I just thought she really tried to scrap. Mackenzie Dern is a terrible striker. Everybody loves her. And I think she sucks. And, and you mean, and as it, not as a, I don't know who she is. You know, I just don't, I just, whenever, when everybody, especially the UFC, tells me that I have to ride the fucking dick train, yeah. I get super paranoid these days because I don't believe your dick trains anymore. I don't believe in her. She's a terrible striker. She's very, very fat. And maybe she needs steroids. You know what I mean? Like everybody else is doing it. Maybe she should do a run, retire for a year, and do roids or I don't know. But you know, all hard she came at her. But I didn't. You know, I didn't think she won that fight. I don't know. Was it, well, maybe she did win that fight. And it was a split decision. That's right. It was a split decision that shouldn't have been a split decision. That's what it was. Um, so she should have won a unanimous. Decision. Yes, I think so. That was the one where I was like, split decision. Uh, or was it the Katzengano one? Which I, yeah, yeah. There's another split. It might have yeah, more so that one. Katz. But they shouldn't have been. It was just like, what the fuck are you talking about? I love Cat, and Cat lost that five straight up, and it was a split decision. I'm like, that was not a split decision. That was, you won. So, uh, but yeah, that chick from the Amazon, that chick is no joke. She's also gigantic. So that tells me maybe she should fight Cyborg, because, I mean, on that night, it would have been a better idea to give Catlin Vieira to Cyborg than whoever the fuck that other chick was. Because when you get hit and you flinch like that, you got to be joking me. Well, I said, you know, on Friday, I don't think the first time I hear of you should be headlining. Uh, you know, I understand that they, they want Cyborg to fight and Cyborg deserves to fight, but these are not these are not pay-per-view headlining fights that they're putting together for her. You mentioned that she was an Invicta champion. Is, couldn't she was in the... She she was in, I was just about to say, yeah. I did not know she was another weight class under... So she's so we know who the ten best one thirty five. I'm gonna guess this is charitable. I don't know the, the goddamn thing about Invicta. I'm gonna guess the ten best one thirty five women in the world. Eight of them are in the UFC. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Holly Holm's probably better than that lady. Yeah. Yes. And she's also a one thirty five. And yeah, that was uh, that was that was embarrassing. I was watching with my wife, and she's like, "Can they just let Cyborg fight a man already?" And that's yeah. like a, that's pretty much an intelligent takeaway. Or, or Megan Anderson, who's the only girl who is the same size and actually is the the right weight class in Victor Champion. Don't know why that fight isn't happening. Uh, but it would have been, I you know, would have been a closer fight. Uh, but Sean O'Malley, Andre Olavsky should not retire right. if he if he keeps wrestling people ah. yeah that might be the difference yeah that was the only thing after the end of this fight I was like you know what because I know you made the joke how he should retire before or after win or lose several fights now yeah this fight if he played that game I could see maybe a year more until somebody cracks him in his fucking head and knocks him unconscious again but yeah. that looked like a way better game plan yeah, if he can avoid head strikes, I think he's got a break. <laughs> That's everybody's game plan. But Brian Ortega launched Frankie Edgar into the air. He did. And that elbow before it was a stunner from hell. And uh, that kid's got a crazy future. That guy is like uh, in the line for all these other crazy people that are... I mean, his next fight could be a title shot or... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, they said that that was the first time Frankie had been, what, knocked out? Or ever. Finished? finished. Ever. Yeah. And he got finished. Yes. Yeah, there was no... Um... There was so much goddamn load up on that uppercut. Yeah, but he, was, he wasn't there. No, I that... know, I know. And, and what Brian said was that he threw the elbow and he thought that Frankie was really, really rocked, but he had the presence of mind to wait and make sure that he was really, really rocked. And right. once he was positive he was really, really rocked, he knew he had all the time in the world to th put what, that thing together. And those the, he should not have gotten two strikes in on the ground. I mean, yeah. he, he, he didn't need one. <laughs> he should not have gotten two. Yeah, but for Frankie, you know, everybody thinks he's going to get up. Everybody thinks he's going to wake up. I mean, how many times have you seen Frankie rock and he comes back? So it was, it was really scary to see him not get up. Like, when the ref got on him, I'm like, he's going to fight the ref. Mm-mm. He was, was like, he was, was like, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty, I'm pretty done. I was surprised to see him even walk over, and God knows what they're saying. He might be just spouting gibberish, but just to, <laughs> to, to look competent and put together enough to walk over to Ortega a minute later, and be like, hey man, good fight, see you later. Yeah. Was, well, I'm not surprised at the sportsmanship. I'm just literally surprised he was able to do it. I'm not surprised when it's him. That guy's a different kind of person. God, it's such a tough fight. Um. So yeah, that was a. Uh, that's that. But there were a lot of entertaining fights. That was a fun card lots of stuff 
But yeah. yeah, Cyborg is not that interesting to me. This was the step in for Max Holloway main event, though. Yep. This wasn't like uh, Cyborg had six months run up in TV. So. Yeah. Know. But there, is, there, is there another person besides Megan Anderson on the roster or in the future that that we know of that is um, anywhere near. Like, it's Amanda Nunes and it's Megan Anderson and then it is retirement. Polly, no! No! Yeah, no. yeah there's nobody. And I wouldn't say, like, Megan Anderson's not well-known by the general public and that's probably not... I know, but it's still... Look, if, if she can fight the Invicta 135 she can definitely fight the Invicta champ 145 or... But it doesn't, and it's already proven. That, I mean, her last five or six fights, it's proven. You don't need a rival or a person with a name. Who's she? I mean, Holly's the only one. And even then, it was kind of. She didn't have the belt, even though she should have had the belt after watching. Yeah. That after the bell punch, she should be the UFC 145. So then it would have been a good. You know, she could has have actually lady, taken the belt. Has that lady actually been seen since then? Since since Jordan <laughs> run to me. <laughs> She ran away from I know. I mean, literally, has she had a fight in the UFC? Has she? Where is she's she, in another country for sure, right? She go back to Denmark. Is she on planet Earth? Is she still existing under that name, or has she legally changed? Right? Her Did she grow identity? a beard and like you now she drives buses for a living or something? I didn't think Cyborg. And I think sometimes when you're fighting, maybe an inferior opponent, it maybe it makes you a little bit sloppy. But she didn't look like this unstoppable force of nature or anything. <coughs> Who? Cyborg. I don't think she's. Yeah. She see, people are gonna get pissed. I don't think she's that technique was good she's just so fucking tough yeah she's just too big and too tough for everybody yeah except megan anderson and i don't think megan anderson has has peaked yet that's why i think it's not a bad thing that they hold off because i would say that that is the only girl out there that is an mma fighter who looks as big as her you know like maybe not like the arm part but she looks she has bigger legs i think she it's an even Weight fight. Like, I think if they held each other, they might, you know, might be somewhat even. And what's going on with Amanda Nunez? Because we know. Oh, wait. Amanda Nunez. No, there's. Amanda Nunez did say she wants to fight, and then Cyborg is now, you know, doing the be careful what you wish for thing. She's coming. It's it's a done deal. Well, but Amanda said to us when we <laughs> spoke to her in Las Vegas that, it, as I recall, if you want me to do it, like, I can put on 10 pounds tomorrow, but I need to put on 10 pounds the right way, or else it serves the UFC's purpose of making Cyborg this unstoppable champion, but it doesn't help Amanda Nunez at all. So I need a year to do that, but I'm the current champion, which means I could be making money as the 135 champion, so you pretty much need to make it financially worth my while to take myself out of the loop for a year. Yeah. That's a bit of a catch-22. Has there been any headway in that direction? Because otherwise, it's just... Andrew, punk. isn't there some headway? Well, that sounds like it's a fight. Well, she got that Pennington fight first, right? Rachel Pennington? Yeah, so she fights her, and then after that, she can do a year of putting on some meat. I'm all for it, man. I, I feel like uh, her punches, you know, she can. she's like the only person I can think of that could actually crack Cyborg in the face, and, and I would be mesmerized to, to see what it did. Did... Did okay? Did that hurt, Cyborg? Cause what the fuck hurts you? Oh. See, and if you thought, and if you thought something like this was in the works, and you were Amanda, maybe you were already mm -hmm. doing this. Also, know? there doesn't look to be like a really glamorous read particularly high paying fight for her in the 135 division at, I mean I was just looking at the challengers and Holly's number one and then Pennington's number two so it's not as if there's all these crazy money all fights right. for her at 135 she can do go up to, to me you go up to 145 you're kind of playing with the house money you beat Cyborg you're a legend you lose well I went up to 145 you just go right back to 135 and hopefully right. there's a worthy competitor by then so well, that's all adds up the, the person who beat Cat this weekend is a worthy competitor uh -huh. I think and that's um, well, but there's always two categories. There's the worthy competitors, and then there's the comp the competitors that people want to pay money to see. Right. Well, the only thing I would have thought this pay people would want to pay would be Cat, but Cat lost, so there's no point now because yeah. she beat Amanda once. Right. So yeah, there's no there's no real point in that. But 
I'm excited to watch all of them fight. I, I would I would love it if somebody could actually give Cyborg a run for her money. I, you know what? I, but the other thing, I thought the announcers were on fucking fire this weekend too. Mm-hmm. The Daniel Cormier, Joe Rogan, and John Aiken, Aiken, Anik, sorry. Um, really, the by far the best team I've ever heard of of announcing. They just know so much, and they were actually laughing and fucking with each other at one point. I thought it was fun as. It was a really and then oh yeah and then the speech that Joe gave about the 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 producer guy that passed away, just everything. Those guys are on another level of of, of broadcasting. They really just know, they just bring it, man. They're just the best, hands down. And yeah, but then, Yana needs to yeah I mean, get, you know, get an ice skating or something. Yeah, uh, or a helmet next time she fights Cyborg. Conor McGregor's next fight will be against a spicy Burger King sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, I didn't talk about O'Malley. Sorry, O'Malley and he's fucking talking about smoking weed and breaking his leg on the guy. I mean that guy. If I don't understand how that is, the the Asian sensation fucking blew it. He blew it. Like the dude's leg was gone. He could not stand up on it, and he actually got a second to see that. He got up and wouldn't put his foot on the ground. The ref is allowed to call the fight right there. But it went back to the ground again and the guy, Andre, held, stayed on the ground with him while his corner was like, get up, get up. And he and, and he lost the fight because all he had to do was go back to the center of the cage and Sean O'Malley cannot walk to the center of the cage. Mm-hmm. The ref has to end it. Yeah. So it was kind of the dumbest thing I've ever seen because he... And this Sean O'Malley guy, I don't know, he's, everybody loves the the hype train, but I, I'm a little confused because I feel like the hype train is cool, he's exciting. Um, he didn't finish, Andre, and that should have been, uh, you know, Conor McGregor would have finished him. Yes, he would have. So I don't know how much of a hype train that is, but the other thing is everyone loves him so much, but he's fucking high all day. Like, Dana White loves this dude, and he's just fucking blunted all day and I, you know I'm okay with that I, I, that's cool if he wants to do it but he's <laughs> he's doing just weed all day I saw TMZ post that he got a UFC blunt made for after the fight did he? yeah I'm mean, sorry a UFC glove blunt oh I see yeah I think he has a weed sponsor because there's not you know I mean, this kid ain't yeah. getting paid that much money I can't feel my leg. It went numb. I felt nothing. Nothing I can't fix with a little medicine at my after party. He's all about it, man. He does dabs on his Instagram. Like, just dabs all day. He's after parties. A bunch of 12 year olds hanging out with him. What's that? That's. Mm. Man, that is a shit blunt. It's funny how just the differences between, like, when you say that what's worse, alcohol or, or weed or whatever, it's not just which one is worse. That's, like, a conversation I have with my dad. They're, like, they're just, they're so different because I don't necessarily, okay, if I see a fighter doing this, I go, eh, if you tell me in a couple of years this guy flamed out because he liked to party a little bit too much, I could see that. If somebody wins a fight and they post the exact same video and it's just like, look at me, I'm pouring uh, Jack Daniels in my mouth while I'm also pouring Old Granddad in my mouth while I'm also pouring Everclear in my mouth. You're like, that guy shouldn't fight. That guy has a problem. That guy that guy needs to take Would you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. See, I, I wouldn't. I definitely would. Because I feel like those dudes do that. But I'm more surprised by the weed guys, and I shouldn't be. But I don't see who's posting that video, is what I'm saying. Okay, no, no, there is, there is this... Okay, there's videos of Connor, drunk as fuck, in a nightclub with his own face stuck on his face, and he's dancing around on the microphone, speaking gibberish. Actually, I, I'm pretty sure Katie pointed out to me on his Instagram, the live feed, mm-hmm. He's she's like, I can't understand anything he's saying. I'm like, who? Connor, look at this video. And I'm, I'm pretty sure he's blotted out on his feed about he's gonna be about to watch a show and he's just like oh you know he's such a drunk irishman in it so i don't but i've never seen you know, i mean i've seen videos of everybody smoking joints who are mma fighters but I've, it's different when you're when you're a um a, a real pusher of it like he's really pushing it if he's not fighting in the photo on instagram he's dabbing or he's... I mean, anybody who wears the, the marijuana... Uh, he wears a marijuana leaf. Uh, what is it that the, the, the dude from Playboy used to wear? 
Oh, like a like a like a smoking jacket. <laughs> yeah, he wears it everywhere he goes, dude. Like everywhere. Like that's what that haircut is, because he's a fucking hash weed head. So it's it's confusing. I like sure, man. Uh, CBD heals your wounds, or every now and then you smoke some weed because it's you're not into painkillers or something. Cool, but to just be like bong on all day and go to the gym. Yeah, I mean, he seems like he bongs on more than the Diaz brothers combined. Maybe he's just young. Maybe. It's just I don't know how they. The, yeah, I'm doing an illegal substance in almost every photo, and then I fight. Like, what's the? Yeah, what happens when you go five rounds? No, I'm not. Well, I'm not worried about that. I, I think he's cardio. Because the Diaz brothers smoke joints. I heard the Diaz brothers, don't know if it's true or not, I just heard that they smoke joints, actual joints, not like thin papers, just the papers you get. And then they go in triathlons after puffing one. So yeah, I think if you just do that kind of cardio all the time, mm-hmm. you can get away with Man. smoking joints, I think. Because just I think they just, instead of you and I get high and we go, Whew, let's get uh, some ice cream... They get high and they go to the gym or they run and yeah. So I guess the cardio just keeps happening. I guess so. Right? Because you just guess so. Because I don't know how it works. I know right. smoking weed slows me down. Yeah, I've known I've known guys who who get their get up and go out of smoking weed, but I don't know that. Uh, just you know, if, if if that guy, like I said, can't go five rounds, I start to think, well, maybe maybe if you weren't smoking seven pounds of marijuana a day. Maybe that would be the difference maker. When tiny little edges make all the difference in the world at the highest level of body, that's all. Well, Sean O'Malley did not look like he was gassing at all. He just looked like uh, he was getting fancy. And then, I mean, do we know what the injury is? Um, yes. Okay. That's right. I mean, Alan Joban broke his foot and he didn't lie on the ground. Good pussy. <laughs> and then, yes. There's this private jet. There's the king. The burger. Wait. Oh, yeah, the burger. He said fuck! He did. This is an edgy sandwich, Jason. He said fuck! Talking a lot of shit to a sandwich. He said fuck! It's a shame if you didn't pronounce it booger. Man. There you go. I don't know who to punch first. Which king gets it first, but that's... <laughs> God, they're annoying bastards. He's still down with the Burger King. He never claimed to be anything anything else. It's just weird that these guys go... Uh, these guys go fast food. Oh, because they... Yes, Rhonda, Rhonda had burgers, and you know, Connor's got chicken sandwiches. Yeah, but what's the price? I mean, obviously these guys have the most money out of anybody. If you want to talk about a uh, green drink sponsor, they're not, you know, I mean, they're not going to give you... No, they don't have that king money. You know? I just feel like... Um, is it a million dollars? This one? I think probably. So... Because I think that... How do you not do a million dollar... Yeah. Eat the sandwich, right? He, and he gets to say it in the commercial... That if you're going to hate on him for doing it, he just paid for his kids fucking... And he said fucking! Burger King! Fucking! Well, see, the reason why I think this is a particularly high-paying opportunity is because if you just have a picture of him and he's like, I'm Conor McGregor, when I'm not busy training for my next fight, I enjoy Whoppers. Well, I don't know how much you get out of that, but Conor obviously has a big um, online presence and... It, you know him doing trash talking shit really resonates so you're going to reach people like if you do something that actually has a little bit of contact a content and a little bit of uh of, of you know arrogance to it well then yeah that's for sure worth a million dollars because people will actually watch the thing and pay attention to it right well i think it's great that he got money from uh, burger king and that his kid I don't know what he keep gets Does another actually, jumpsuit. I feel like Burger King is still like the absolute ghettoist of the national fast food chains. Is they actually do they actually get a bump out of any of this? I like, mean, if, according to YouTube, that's not true, Michael. Oh really? Yeah, according to YouTube, McDonald's is still the trashiest. 
Burger King is my personal favorite of the national brands. It's where all the good fights on YouTube happen. Oh, I see. <laughs> there was a stabbing at a Chuck E. Cheese. Yes, well, Chuck E. Cheese, um, yeah, that's another level because that's stabbing with children. Yeah, every yeah, single McDonald's. person there had to be there with a kid. There's yeah. just no goddamn. There's no goddamn reason. You, you, like, go you go to Dave and Buster's if you're not with a kid. You're still sketchy if you go to Dave and Buster's without a kid. But sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, stabbing at Chuck E. Cheese means you're stabbing with children. There that, were like twenty people involved in this brawl. Yeah, it was Chuck E. Cheese. Everybody knows it's a. Don it's a I mean, dude, you got you got a rat and you got beer. Yeah, and at best, half the games were. How many people died? Nobody died. Nah. Kind of a stabber, are you? So who stabbed who? It doesn't matter. We didn't get to that. Uh, a 47-year-old woman and a 24-year-old woman uh, face multiple charges following this incident that injured <coughs> two people. I know that a Chuck E. Cheese employee bravely tried to get in the the middle of it to break it up, which yeah. shocks me, because if I'm a Chuck E. Cheese employer, I employee, it is not worth it. Yeah. Um, but I don't maybe he's looking to move up in the Chuck E. Cheese ranks. Maybe. I don't think that was the stabbing victim. When officers arrived, people were actively fighting in front of and inside the restaurant. Yeah. So this uh, spawned multiple, you know, smaller fracases. Uh -huh. And uh, um, it, one woman was found with a minor stab wound to her hip. Um, the uh, Jones lady, the 47-year-old, is the one who faces counts of aggravated assault with a weapon and um, one count of possession of a prohibited weapon and one count of unlawful possession of a weapon. So I think she was the uh, knife owner and stabber. Man, who stabs a Chucky? And the other lady got one count of resisting arrest, which means... You can't really just say that the stab lady was the one who made life difficult for everybody else. Because if I'm at Chuck E. Cheese with my kid and somebody starts a fight with me and tries to stab me, I'm not resisting arrest when the cops come. Oh, I am. I'm kind of bummed out about going to jail for getting stabbed. Well, she's not the one who got stabbed. It's oh. not clear to me. I think it was just oh. one of the other 15 to 20 people. Who oh, got okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got you to gotta cool it down when the popo show up. Otherwise, it looks like it's your fault. Everybody um, knows that. One other thing. Well, two other things, actually. Well, we're on the topic, a topic from the fast food world. Robots have started making burgers. That happened. Yeah. Pretty much every job that high school kids used to have will be replaced by robots within five years. So what do the kids do? Play video games? Well, I don't think you can really get an after school. Like, I want my kid to have an after school job, like a summer job when he's in high school. And I don't really know what's going to be left for him. Like, newspaper delivery. That's what I did when I was, like, 12. That was my first Wait, job. Wait, isn't a newspaper delivery? People don't do that, do they? I know. Well, if they do... Well, even I was getting edged out by adults at the time. What? Yeah. Because, like, one guy who was, like, semi-employed would get, like, ten kids' worth of paper routes, and he would do it all in his car. Oh, what a bitch. Yeah, so you going around with your bike, like, Oh, morning, Mr. Ramirez! And you yeah. throw in the thing. That was already kind of on its way out, and now... They have this thing, and it may, and this is a real thing. It's not a prototype. The place is open somewhere in Southern California, and it makes a perfect burger every single time because it's fucking, it's a robot, not a fucking stoned moron. Hey. What? Okay. Um, but there's a lady there. What's she doing? Well, I think she's taking the orders. Also, at this point in time, I think they still need humans to put the patty on the griddle. Don't oh, the, the robot, whatever. The robot you... can do everything else. What kind of chef can't put a patty on a plate? It's only a matter of time. Well, call me when you figure out how to put the meat on the plate, you Full fucking useless robot. Uh, Kelly Burger. Frick. It's a Kelly Burger? What does that mean? That's the, name the name of the place? The, that's the name of the chain, yeah. And that guy, I saw you retweet this, the guy who set the world record for eating Big Macs has now uh, reached another milestone in his legendary career, eating his 30,000th um, Big Mac. But he didn't die? No. Oh. I thought he died trying to eat that many. No. I think Bitpimp said he's going to eat his 30th soon and he's going to die a month later. Oh. No. No, he's, he's doing fine. He buys them like ahead of time and then he microwaves them. I'm not interested in this man. Mm. Oh, God, Mark. Oh, that's why. Yeah. He's one of those guys. He's, he loves John Lennon, right? He's got John Lennon glasses. He's got... A crazy bowl cut that he gave himself. Yeah, he's got mutton chops that Lennon himself would have been envious of. Yeah, I mean... 
Oh, I thought he was English for some reason. I mean, I know why. I thought he was English. Right, because he he's like dressed like a fucking Jack beetle, yeah. <laughs> right, he's from, he's from Wisconsin. We talked about him not that long ago when he set the record. Okay. This is just his next legendary milestone. Do you think he gets laid from... No. Right. Do you think he gets, like, recognized in his town? It's like, with pity, I would imagine. But do you think he sees it oh, as pity? Oh, there's Don. You think he sees getting himself this, as a get, get celebrity? I'm just glad he's got something, is what they say. I think I, yep, I think I see it. I think he has a great day. I think he thinks he walks out like he's a star. I think he's happy, and I'm happy that he's happy. What's his Instagram? I'm sure he's huge. He's wearing... <laughs> I mean, that haircut is tremendous. Oh, he's got a big... Uh, the back of it is a yeah. back. Wow. Let's see a ring on his finger, Michael. No, I think he might be uh, available for ladies' uh, dating needs. Well, you better get him while, it, while the going's hot, ladies. Cause... He looks like he's doing fine. He's not a young man. I mean, he said he, he started using them to avoid the draft for fucking Vietnam. So he's, he's made it this far. I'm happy he's happy. Yeah. Man, if they had drafted him, at least they would have given him a fucking haircut. Boy, is he hurting. See the Supercross? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I know. Me too. I think we watched it together. It was pretty romantic. Yeah. That Jason Anderson guy's pretty special, isn't he? Yeah, that's what I was thinking while I was watching the Supercross this weekend. Yeah, me too. I was also thinking that Marvin Muscan did well, and that I'm happy for him and his mm-hmm. franchise. Yes, I noticed that uh, Eli Tomac that's also your favorite. availed himself. Yeah, you know, you love Eli, and that's cool. I respect you for that. Mm-hmm. Chad Reed got 10th. He did our first top ten of the season. Yep, Husqvarna doing all kinds of stuff. He's getting better every day, and of course, the uh, most starts in the history of any motocross person in the world, the greatest of all time, mm-hmm. Chad Reed. Uh, yeah, yeah, his brother's fucked up. <laughs> his brother's fried. You haven't seen him for a while. No, I think he's driving around in a fake police car trying to arrest people. That was the last time he ever won anything, I think. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. Look, you win, and then you lose, and then you die. Make the most of it. The fuck? I got a goddamn giant hair in my hand. Um, speaking of dying, I lost my my guy, Supercross, today. Oh, no. He passed away. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Katie's super bummed out about it. Um, it's, it's tough for the family, losing the 50 and then losing the soupy, but... Of course. You know, we will... We will continue without him. We will be missed. Very sorry for my wife more than anybody. She was, they were really locked down. Serious bros. Um, and then, of course, we lost uh, an Ellis fam guy as well that I never met, but a lot of, spe- a lot of people were talking about him, sent me some posts on him. So he seemed like a really nice guy. He seemed like a really positive guy too. So sad to see uh, another one of us leave. So it's two people, as far as I know, I lost this weekend. So I'm very sorry for, uh, like, what's his name again? Because I know he has an inappropriate tag that I don't want to... Right. Because <laughs> I think one of you... <laughs> that's, that's what happens when you hang out with us. You get called asshole, gee, so. But yeah, I saw a bunch of posts from everybody that missed him. So he was a loved man. And... Uh, and, and, and I did see a couple of things on his thing that it showed that he was a very positive man so it sucks when people have to leave us just enjoy the time when you have them I guess of course yeah. am I supposed to take a break? Yeah, we'll take I will take a break right now
do you want to take the like a full eight minutes here or four minutes? Uh, just a just a four. We'll I guess. Finish up the other half. Yeah. So coming back, we can do the hoaxes or things that actually happened, uh, the mashup songs, headlines, or do the call in for what's been in your butt. Mashup. Okay. okay. And what's been going on the news? Because mm -hmm. let's get to it. Okay. Uh, there were so a couple Kevin, of good ones in there. I saw. Kevin hasn't uh, heard them either, so the three of you can play along for the game. Okay. Yeah. So he's coming in. Okay. What up, laser sword? Where's Daddy Dingo? Dingo is in New York. With his whatever fuck it is, crew. Anyone gonna come here and fuck my huge box? We should totally start fucking this. Hey, uh, some people in Houston found something they were not expecting in the walls of their home. Rats. Um, the, Maggots. The remains of the person who had lived there before them. What? Eh? He put himself in the wall? A woman, um, she is believed to have fallen through her attic floor before becoming wedged in the walls. One would hope that she died in the fall. Oh, uh, no. Not wedged in the walls. Oh. So she went missing, and the neighbors were looking for her, and then she was just declared missing. And uh, they found her bones. You can see big Dang. They were late. You can see pictures of her bones. Oh, that's late as fuck. Oh, yeah. Man. She's 
got, I mean, she's just full on it's people skeleton. Like revival, more revival in a fucking pyramids. Yeah, there's there's like a she's a goner. webs in her nose hole. Yeah, 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 she's a goner. She's definitely dead. Yep. And no one smells. I'm not the a doctor. Of that. No, well, I know, right? The place must have been vacant during the critical period because there's nothing left there to smell. Mm. Yeah, and how long does it take for a dead body to completely decompose and not stink anymore? You know, I, I was watching a, uh, a documentary last night on Netflix about pe- people, murderers, like, uh, that murdered a lot of people, and one man he, who uh, murdered people, and then he would, like, keep them and hang out with them for long periods of time until they got stinky, and then he was, like, he put them in the floorboards, or he'd put them in the wall, and then he'd, like, or he'd make big fires, and the kids, like, he... You know, I mean, he had a, he killed like twenty people. Somebody would kill them and keep them in his house for a long, because he wanted a companion that would Whoa. do whatever he wanted. Corpse order. Mm-hmm. It's like that scene in Sicario. Kept the heads like and all kinds of stuff. There's a little bit of a conspiracy theory with this lady where they were doing some development in the uh, area where she lived in Houston, and she was part of. Um, her and some neighbors had been vocal in their opposition to the real estate development that was going on, and they say it was a really small hole for a human being to fall through. So they think they stuffed her in there? Aha! Uh-huh. She was murdered. She was like a tiny old lady. Like, the picture I saw of her, she was in, like, a blue dress and, like, very frail looking, so Aww. I could see her falling in a little crevice. They said it was two inches wider than um, a dollar bill. Oh. Yeah, yeah that's... Hmm. <laughs> How'd her skull fit through that? I'm assuming they mean a bill lengthwise plus two inches, but still. And also, she had cats, and the cats did, did not make it either. Oh. But in happier did, did they news, also fall down the hole? That is really, really narrow. That's a ghost house. That is so narrow. Yeah, eight inches. Fuck. That's what they said. I would never go and spend a night in that house. That is haunted. And the yeah, cats died. Yeah, Refund on what? Oh, once like, you because you're supposed to get like a yeah. deal or something if somebody croaks in the house before you buy it. Yeah, I would say no because you already signed stuff. Most likely, most likely, it's got to be different too if somebody gets murdered. Yeah, I think in it's just if it's a murder, than if somebody dies. Well, we're saying yeah. it is a murder. Is that because they're going off of like if you're murdered, you might be a ghost? No, well, then it's like a criminal act has taken place no. in that dwelling. Yeah, so that's why, why do people, why would people ex- not want to live in a house that someone had been murdered in? A, because it's creepy to picture it maybe happening, you know, every time you go into your foyer. But also because people do get weird and... Sorry. I mean, like, if if it's the only, only the crime, like if it's a crime, it tears a hole in the space-time fabric, it's not like a death? Well, just think of it from the other way like what about if somebody is elderly and they're in the hospital and then they're in hospice and then they go you know what i would really rather pass in my home and they said by the way grandma was lived a great full life and she uh, reached her natural conclusion in the bedroom that doesn't spook me out about wanting to live in a house at all not at all right but if she was killed it would not I at think all i'm pretty good about buying I'm better i mean is the murderer it. still in the room right exactly because if he's not, I don't care. I'm yeah. not trying to brag, but you I, ain't a I'm, ghost. A, I'm a little better than average at buying murder houses. I'm like. into it. I'm into it. Well, just because I... There's that. Yeah, what's the deal? <laughs> just, cause I, just because I ever, I, I'm like, I'll never get a deal, ever. I'm the worst deal guy ever. And I'm like, wait, you're saying that it might be haunted? All right, I'll buy it. Because yeah. I don't believe in haunted, so... Yeah. But you, I thought you stayed at that hotel in Austin, which is supposed to be haunted. Yeah, it fucking didn't. What the fuck? Didn't Katie at least think? That oh, that was and yeah, then that's a. Wait, didn't a ghost like? She might be listening, but that's. Was, I thought there was something that took place when you guys were there. Always something. Come on, man. I thought a ghost peed all over your floor mysteriously during the night. Oh, <laughs> that was definitely a ghost who had had way too much to drink. Oh, I've had a similar experience. Not I me. I passed out at this house party and some ghost room. <laughs> while sleeping. Yeah, yeah, that's one of those things. So, we didn't have to, yeah, I don't believe in ghosts. And if I and I, but I wish I would. <laughs> I wish a ghost would come up to me and say, "Hoogity boogity, let me fix your back because it looks like you're in a lot of pain." I want both at the same time because then I'd be like, "Oh, there's an afterlife." Oh, maybe your back is haunted, and that's why it hurts. No, oh, it's fucking haunted, all right. It's haunted inside <laughs> my soul. It's got nonstop movement in your chair. I'm fucking trying done. to find that one position. Yeah, and there isn't one. That's the fuck. I don't know why I'm doing it because there isn't one. I offered to. Now set I'm, ca- you up. I'm I'm Kaepernicking. I offered to set you up on the 
the sofa just to lay down. Yeah, but he just show from there. he <laughs> said because he said would it be com- would they be find something comedic in lying on the couch and doing a show? And I'm like, <laughs> no, fucker, because you're just gonna laugh at me for lying on the couch. That then no one else can see me. But why also, why don't you just lay on the couch, Kevin? Come around the board and you lay on the couch. Go for it. I can't run the board like I run the board. It's my baby. I'm the Elton John of this board. He was there last night. At He's the had Oscars? A, did he yep. see the other incident say. he had uh, over the weekend? Who, what? The other incident he had over Elton? the weekend? Elton? Yeah. No? What happened? So Somebody he, hit him in the face with a croissant this time? <laughs> not this time, but what he brought it? people up on stage, yeah. and they wouldn't leave him alone, so he just stopped the show and walked off. So he's had the beads in the face, and then he brought people for the Saturday night song up on stage to dance and hang out. And they tackled him. Yeah, they wouldn't leave him alone. So he kept he touching just, him. Yeah, he called off don't the show. Touch, don't touch, don't Wait, so the Saturday night song, the full title of which is obviously... It's Saturday night, and everything's all right? <laughs> Let's party? I don't know. All right, well, you're the perfect person to run this, this next game. I did have to look up a number of songs, uh, titles. And I was like, all right, what's a classic rock song? Man, you need that on a button. Uh, so I put together a bunch of songs. <laughs> how many hey classic, Siri, what is music? How many classic rock bands do you think you could name? Would you tell me if a band I name is not classic? Yes. Probably like 15. No, 10. 10. I think 5. You think you could name 10 classic rock bands? All right, does, does, are the Rolling Stones classic rock? Wow. Yeah. No, they are hip-hop. No. They are the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> Everybody knows that. They, yeah, they are frozen vegetables. <laughs> yeah. Try again. Does Dokken fit classic rock? <laughs> <laughs> he only got the second one before he fucked up. Dokken. Whitesnake? Dokken no. is such a weird number two answer to have it's in It's crazy head. that you know... Oh, I saw them in concert. Heard of them. They opened for Poison at a concert I went to. That's weird. <laughs> How'd you get there? Oh, get so the Poison weren't turn opening for Belle Bib DeVoe, who were opening for <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's the only way that works out. Yeah. Uh, it was it was Faster Pussycat, Dokken, Whitesnake, Poison. It was a great show. You tried to I get was late. in high school. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had a good time. I was rocking out. I, I did many keg stands. <laughs> I bought merch. Well, all right. I'll have one shirt, please. All right, so this first mashup, I would say, is of classic rock uh, bands. So it could be anybody. Anybody. <laughs> it could be anything. Uh, it could be absolute, may not even be music. Yeah, it could be just war. <laughs> Guns. Helicopters. And this game Classic will be rock. for you guys to name the band and song that is being played in the mashup. You can play at home, too, if you're listening. I don't understand. Go again? You can give him permission. <laughs> 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 FYI, retroactively, you are not allowed to play along with anything else. Wait. <laughs> is this on the buttons? It's on yes. the game page, I think. So mashup one. You guys are going to try to name all the songs that are playing at one time. And how many are playing, or do we not get to know? You don't get to know. Sweet. So this, I'm not 100% sure this is going to be good. Mm. Pretty convinced it's going to be funny one way or the other. You guys are either making fun of me, or it's actually entertaining. I don't think Will was fucking me with me when he said, yeah, this is this can be funny, and this can be good. Even Smart. though he knew that you were going to come in here and say that it's your idea. Yeah, even though he, he, is, can trust Will. he is your arch right. enemy who is just sworn to make you look bad on the internet. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Have you know that, you know that kid that's like, yeah. that breaks his, Samuel L. Jackson, his arm, his, all his bones break a lot, and Will Smith doesn't break? <laughs> that's what you guys are. So, you got guess, uh, who's, guess who's the broken one? Me. Uh, no! Oh, okay. Will's the one that breaks all the time. Uh, so you got Mr. Glass. Mm-hmm. You've got seven different mashups. Billy, uh, Billy Idol is breaking his bones right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so go ahead and uh, guess the songs that are playing. Five, you're saying? Uh, there are seven different oh, songs okay. that are mashed up. There are seven different mashups. Name all the songs in each mashup. Still confused. What? Yeah. Play the game. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, oh my Crying by Aerosmith. Right? I hear Rolling Stones in there. I don't know which song, though. Get out of my brain, Aerosmith. (laughs) 
Rolling Stones. Oh, yeah, yeah, paint it black. Yeah. Oh, there's three? There's three. Okay. Holy Christ. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to do that ever again. I feel like uh, somebody <laughs> just grabbed me by my ankles and spammed me around real fast. Uh, my brain's fucked. So you got two of them. Aerosmith crying, Rolling Stones painted black. One last song, which I had to lower a little bit because once you hear it, it you hear it the entire time. It's Metallica. Time. It's not Metallica. It's Pearl Jam. Nope. Can we just do a, little, was... a little bit again? Oh, it's do more we have intrusive to? than Rolling Stones. That was all I heard. Or, I mean... I mean... Yeah, I... Social distortion. Nope. I'm not gonna. I don't think I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna get it. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, I can't hear it anymore. What is it? Uh, that would be Boston more than a feeling. That's all we can hear if we were to listen to that again. I think you hear it. I hear it underneath. All Number two. <sighs> can we? You'll like this one, Jason. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What's this one? Well, I'm not gonna tell you beforehand. That would ruin the game. How many bands are in it? Three. Okay. Here we go. Okay, Metallica. Yeah. Wherever I may roam. ACD. Oh, oh, Enter, Sand Enter Sandman. ACDC. Was there Alice in Chains in there too? Uh, there was Metallica and there was ACDC. The third one you've not yet named. Bon Jovi? Man, this is just the worst day for this bit. Like, that is fucking my brain so hard. I can't... But there's some chanting thing that I can't... Yeah, I know every there's, time like, I... a group vocal thing yeah. I can't get. Every time my ear starts to hone in on it... I know. I just... Yeah! 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be Midnight Old Beds Are Burning. Oh, oh no! God damn it, I thought... How dare yeah, you? People had a homing signal. For <laughs> I just, guess not. Just a couple more, Jason. <laughs> Number three. Three bands. Dr. Feelgood? Judas Priest? Oh, Hopper Teacher. Oh, yeah. Ragdoll by Aerosmith? Oh, it's obvious. Oh, oh yeah, Poison and Skinny Bop. Yeah. Okay, I'm really good at this now. Wow. Well, I never realized how much Unskinny Bop was a blatant rewrite of Ragdoll by Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number four has four. Oh, shit. Oh, my Christ. So, Dr. Dre. Nope. A Snoop. Coolio. Tupac. Ice Cube? Uh, yeah. S Snoop Dogg. No Snoop? No. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Snoop, big, sorry. Big, yeah. Biggie? And Biggie. We got all four? Yeah, you got oh, all we four. We can turn it off? <laughs> <laughs> That's the reward. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> listening to this shit. This is awesome. Uh, next one, number five. It doesn't have five, does it? No, it's got three. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Yep. Yeah, and that... Off Woo! Offspring? Yeah, Offspring, offspring. that's what it is. Is it 311? Yep. You just made the poo poo platter of yep. shit? <laughs> yep, yeah, 311 Red Hot Chili Peppers. I didn't actually hear them, it just made sense that they would be in there. <laughs> Fucking cocksuckers. Uh, number six has three. Corn. Yeah. Yeah. Papa Roach. Yep. Wow. Slipknot. Nope. Limp Bizkit. 
Correct. Oh, thank but, God. I mean, when somebody gets the third one, the relief I get in my mind is wild. Are you under the impression these are classic rock bands? No, no, no. I tried to go in a different <laughs> okay. genre. I only think the first one was classic rock. Well, yeah, Crying this... by Aerosmith. Right? Right, yeah. <laughs> Freedom rock. <laughs> Turn it up, man. It's fucking Aerosmith from 93. Woo! Pass me that J. That last one, that was that was when, like... What's that, that that part of the drum that's just like they, they really just fucking amplify the tinny knock of it? That, uh, snare? Snare, is that what you're looking yeah. for? I think so. You fucking idiot. I don't, know my, <laughs> I don't know my drum parts. I can I can identify a cymbal. The what you call the sound? The what? The it, tinny? Well, because like, that whole era, they just complete, they boosted all of the snares. See, I, don't, I think you just call it Korn, because Korn were fucking insane with that particular album on the snare. I and like I think that, that every uh, you, album that came out around then, they all just boosted the snare like crazy. Like that was all I heard. I don't know. I felt like what's the name? Fucking really went too far. It was Avenged Sevenfold or yes. something. Yeah, they, that, 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 that country. Yeah, it's I was like, what the fuck? It's a it's a, it's a bucket. Like, he sounds like he's one of those bucket kids at yeah. the subway. It really, it's an and it's an amazing band and an amazing drummer. And, and the other snare insult was uh, Metallica's load when Lars was like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna make my snare sound like some sort of fucking loose bass string." And was like, "That now this is my new snare." Like he was like, "I'm creating." new sounds I'm like no dude you're fucking your drum kit up like, and then sure enough he went back wait was that load or was that St. Anger or did he do it two different times because St. Anger is the really bad one. Oh, it's St. Anger sorry yeah. I get those all mixed up they're, that's like a really they're bad, real fun it's like a cheap bucket yeah like, and I can tell bucket. it's Tupperware and he was super <laughs> on it too he was like yeah. really trying to make that get that across like listen to this snare I'm like, yeah that's all you hear is a doink 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 yeah Anyway, we've got one last one. I think we'll get you'll get two out of the three pretty easily. Uh, Metallica. <laughs> Good, sorry. Outcast. Nope. Oh, Fifty Cent. I hear Wangster. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cypress Hill. Bone Thugs. Nope. God, I hate Wangsta. <laughs> da Brat. Nope. ICP. Eminem. Um, Eminem is correct. Shut up, 50 Cent. I know, right? Little Bow Wow. Little Bow Wow. <laughs> 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 oh, God, I'm going to kill myself. It's the worst thing ever. So yeah, you I, got the two I thought you would get. I Eminem and 50 I'm Cent. I'm not sure I care. <laughs> Lil Wayne was also in there. Oh, yeah, wow. I never would have gotten that. You could have made that the loudest. Man, I wonder how how many hours could you take that? I was just thinking that would be a great tool for our government to employ when questioning like ISIS members. I, yeah, because if I knew anything, I would crack in, on the first one. <laughs> right? Not only a classic radio bit, but also an advanced torture technique. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying it in your car, because some people confess their mum's lives on that. I was watching that uh, that Waco miniseries that's on Paramount right now that just finished up, and they were showing like the torture techniques that the FBI and ATF did to the people on the Branch Davidian. I assume they used the actual the the same sound. It was just dolphin noises that they just blasted at the uh, Branch Davidians and David Koresh, which seems like a weird torture tactic. And yeah, like, did it make them crack? No. No, but just like squeaking dolphins. They should have had Will show up and do his fucking dolphin dad jokes. That <laughs> For like that six weeks. Six weeks. Just bright lights in the middle of the night and squeaking dolphins. So I feel like even when they... Because when they, they, they talk about how they, they try to... Um, they use metal to kind of try and scare like ISIS it, pe- people. Noriega was the famous one with metal. I feel like they need a real metal head to guide them. Like, they always go for kind of, like, uh, more vanilla metal. No, because they're mainstream, and yeah, you're, if you're a hardcore metal person, you're like, wait, these people are scared of, like, evil sounds, and you're a metalhead? You're like, wait, you picked fucking Inter Sandman or something? Like, do you realize yeah. how fucking dark... For somebody who doesn't speak English and is in another country, I know exactly what to play that makes them go, these people are fucked in the head. Yeah, nobody's cracking under fucking Disturbed. Right. Well, I am. Oh, that's true. You play that in the car. I'm either <laughs> jumping out the window or slitting your throat. Just take your cho- take your pick. I'm out of here. Did Fifty Cent. If if we just say for the sake of conversation that uh, Into Clubs an awesome song. Did he have another good song? 
Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. The uh, I Get Money was really big. I don't know. Uh, I didn't say big. I said good. I mean, I felt like that whole album from start to finish was good. That was the thing. That was like one of the last albums where all the songs were pretty good. Right after that, he died in the ass, but yeah. there were like a bunch of songs on that album that were good. But the next album, he was airbrushing a six-pack on the cover. Get Rich or Die Trying. That was his big one. Um, well, actually, speaking of what we've been speaking of, remember how those people, uh, American diplomats, were being deafened and what have you at the American embassy in um, Cuba? Yeah. They think they might know how that happened. It may be the result of ultrasonic signals from poorly functioning surveillance equipment. They fucked themselves. Uh, no, in all likelihood, the Cubans or and or the Russians were spying on our diplomats, and their shit was malfunctioning. And oh, they, uh, wow! That's a. I mean, that's probably on their end a fortunate error. I think you kind of assume that when you're on like not totally. I think you. Was, I, I would assume if I were in an embassy, even in like a friendly country like Canada, or do we have an embassy in Canada? And why ask me? Oh, yeah, you do. You do. Wow, I don't know that. Oh, I had to go. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think you just assume that if it's on their turf, they're trying to spy on you there. Everybody's spying on everybody. Like, we're spying on Germany. Germany's spying on us. Everybody's spying on I'm not on spying on anybody. Yeah, it's just weird that that's even a thing. Like, how did nobody know on testing all these things, all this surveillance equipment, that when it malfunctions, it'll scramble your brain? Well, well nobody knew that. It's just an accident, right? Yeah, but I mean, you, when you're building that stuff, don't you kind of know what your machine is capable I might know of? The, and... I might know the answer to that. So the reason why we have this theory that that's what was going on is because the University of Michigan researchers, um, they they got the, that idea, that hypothesis, and they tested it by, they put together two of these machines that you might use for surveillance, and if something squirrely happens, the two of them put together can make this really weird noise. Uh, that's how that could happen without, even if you, you could test it and still not know it was going to do that. That's weird. Yeah. And it's also so weird how, like, this stuff keeps progressing, but it's kind of like uh, the countermeasures aren't, you know what I mean? Like, you know, someone invents a sword, then someone invents a shield. Uh, we don't have, any, like, anything to counteract nukes. Like, we've had nukes for so long, and we just keep making more and more. Well, and that's more. not true. There's the uh, the nuke bowl. The nuke bowl? Yep. You get in the bowl, and it's, you're fine. I'll take 12, please. Why? Nukes are pretty good. Yeah, and uh, I don't understand why our government, like the world governments, need to keep making more when we already have enough to destroy the world, the entire planet, like fifty times over or something crazy. Yeah, like I've that. never really understood how that works either. Like you have enough to destroy the world once. Okay, now destroy the world twice, just in case something happens with the first batch or half of them don't work or something. But when you have enough to destroy the world forty times, and you go, but. If we really want everyone to respect us, we need to be able to destroy the world 80 times. I, I, I'm sure there's a reason, because they all do it, but I've never, no one's ever explained that to me. I think it's just bragging, bragging about the numbers. Because these go to 11. Exactly. Yep. Like, if, so. if someone was going to throw me in a volcano, and I'm like, no, I'm not giving you my information. Okay, well, we're going to throw you in this volcano that's a thousand degrees hotter than that other one. I'd be like, well, fucking... Once, once you reach a certain What about if you miss? Say, everybody says that till they see the mega volcano. Can you miss? Oh, yeah, right. I've heard they're gnarly. <laughs> yeah, you, you're singing like a canary once you see the mega <laughs> volcano. Yeah, I don't, maybe maybe you miss and they need backups. Well, what if there's duds? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, that's why I said two times, three times, I guess I understand how that works. But I mean, what do we have in the thousands? But isn't it just like you want to have more than the other person? But why? That's the point. Like, Why? It's, because we're... It's a pissing contest. The humans... It's a weird one. Children just saying, oh yeah, well then I've... Oh yeah, well then... And then off they go to the... Where they are. That would be like if we never progressed past swords. And America and Russia were like... Every year, one-upping each other. Like, well, we have a sword that's a mile long. All right, well, what the fuck are you going to do with a mile-long sword? Who's going to throw that at anybody? Well, it's not quite like that. It's like saying, say that, say there's like 100,000 guys each place, and you go, well, we've got 100,000 swords. Well, so do we. Well, we got 200,000 swords, so we can use two at a time, and if a guy drops one, he we've got another one. Well, we've got 300,000, because maybe a couple of them will break. And then you go, we have 7 billion swords. <laughs> it's like, well, congratulations. I'm going to go ahead and say you wasted a little bit of money and manpower building those swords because you could never possibly use all of them. And that's kind of where we are with nuclear weapons. But, if we did use them all, we'd have backups. 
I guess. We've won a lot. I'm just surprised one of the countries that's in this international nuclear pissing contest never took that angle of, well, joke's on you. We just have enough to blow up the world ten times. Mm. And we don't anticipate having to blow up the world more than once. What about if you shoot one? Fun building even more. What about if you shoot nukes at each other and they hit each other in the sky? Well, you don't want to live there. Right. I'm just saying, does that nullify? You have to send shoot more over? Well, I think if they both collided midair, they go up pretty high before they come back down. Right. That that could just... I mean, you detonate a nuke in the atmosphere. I think that's game over. For what? Everybody. Is it? No, it's not. What are you basing that on? Yeah. Did you get this from a comic book? You fucking sure bullshit not. artist. Did Iron Man do this? There yeah. is something about, like, if you set off a nuke in the atmosphere, it's... Who said that? John Stark? Science. Wait, not John Stark. John. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm who just cares? You don't seem to actually know what you're talking about. Yeah, that was pretty big. <laughs> you just hear stuff and you don't remember. Well, you, you can't. You gotta have. You can't just say, "Oh, that goes off. We're all fucked." But what are you basing that well, on? I'm sure Andrew can shame me if I'm if I'm wrong. He likes doing that. But I I, I, I distinctly remember hearing that if like a nuke goes off in the atmosphere, that's like irreplaceable. Not in the movie. You heard this in real life. Yeah. Okay. Opens it opens a dimension, right? <clears throat> oh, I didn't see that. And then what happened, Mello? Wait, Nothing. In a helicopter? Did they take it into space? In a helicopter? And set it off. Is there anybody in the helicopter? Wait, and lived. Tom Hanks is did, not... Did his weave live? <laughs> wow. I didn't know that. Well, that's an achievement. The whole nuke stuff is just... Everything nuclear is just overly creepy. You know, they say, like, uh, all the, the water that they're doing with the, the... Is it the Fukushima plant? Uh-huh. Like, all the stuff that they're collecting, like, they have to hose everything down, and then they store all that water they're spraying because it all gets radiated, and they just have these massive tanks of all this radiated water and nothing to do with it. I put it in the earth. Yeah, right? Yeah, I, think that's a bad, I think that's bad. Man, nah, radioactive yeah, trees are gangster. Not if you put it down far enough. Into the core. Yeah. Where Satan lives. Inject it into the core. Take that, Satan. Yeah. Cool off. Yeah, cool down, Satan. Have an ice day. Let up some <laughs> let up some steam, <laughs> Satan. <laughs> well, Andrew is winnowing through all of the nuclear experts calling. Me Why? <laughs> Why do we? T- I'm not talking to nuclear experts on here. That's ridiculous. We've got one guy, Adam. Yes, sir. What's up? How are we doing? Good. Wait a minute. What? A, thank you, Adam. What about when General Zod is in the glass chamber and Superman takes the bomb from the Eiffel Tower and throws it into space? That didn't fucking do anything to... Not even Paris was in trouble. I mean, Zod got out, but... Yeah, I feel like in a movie you throw a bomb into space, that pretty much means you saved the day. Well, let's... Wait. All right, well... I think once you clear the atmosphere and you get actually into outer space, I think... <laughs> might be in the clear then. <clears throat> I would hope so. Right, that's the nightmare scenario I brought up a couple times. I, for, I didn't know it was that, that nukes that did it is that's like one of the things that they theorize that North Korea could do or Russia could do or something is if you wipe out all the if you wipe out the electrical grid in America, it's going to get real, real, real bad for a really, really, really long time. What is money? Yeah. Like destabilizing the world kind of shit. 
In lighter news. Yeah. Good, good call. A car exploded in Maryland after the man driving it um, used body spray and then lit a cigarette. Axe! I, I, I searched for that word. Who uses body spray? Um, Kids, all right? Teenagers? Every guy at my gym. Oh. Really? I didn't realize it was still a thing. Yeah, do you know you smell like fly spray? Can't... Oh, sorry, Andrew. It's, it's good. Oh, what no, do you, you do? Wait, why do you use it so much? You're still sweaty. It's not working. I'm getting that weird tickle, throw up, burn that you get in the back of your throat when you walk through that fog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just thinking about it. Yeah, that's not. Ch- I mean, first of all, I don't know if anybody knows this. Maybe you don't follow the Howard Stern show, but there's there's bad stuff in a lot of deodorants. There's like an actual thing in there, the magne... No. Aluminum. Yeah, something like that. So you've got to get uh, the antiperspirant that doesn't have aluminum in it. Otherwise, it'll give you cancer in your armpits. Yeah, I actually... That's what Howard Stern told me. I learned that on the Jason Ellis show. Well, I got it from Howard Stern. Aubrey said that here before. Right. All right. Well, then we did it first. Tully, when you... Once again, uh, innovating the game. (laughs) That you switched to that Tom's deodorant? I did not switch to Tom's. I used Primal Pit Paste. Oh, I thought you said you used Tom's. Uh-huh. The stuff that doesn't... Oh, well. I thought I got that from you, and I started doing it. I don't know if it's... Um, I don't know if it's saving me from cancer, but it doesn't have the shit that is alleged to cause cancer, the metals, and I don't think I smell, so... Yeah, I found one. I got a couple. I got... Uh, there's one... The cheap one is the Old Spice one that doesn't have anything in it, and then I have some one that my wife got me the other day that's like... Some fruity shit. Am I, I mean, and I'm, uh, especially from the uh, prostate infection, uh, and I, I definitely had some uh, extra sweat going on. Uh, a lot of cold sweats, nervous sweats, and all this stuff. I'm still going through it, but I'm nowhere near as bad as I was. And my armpits didn't smell. Like, so it was the biggest test ever, because I don't think I've ever been more... Uh, my body's trying to get something out of my system. I can, I mean, I think it's slowly getting better, but... I don't. My armpits don't smell, and I can just tell that that shit works. But Since the Axe body spray <laughs> is not. That's just all bets are off. They're just like, yeah, we put everything in it, and you kind of spray it everywhere. Is the other thing like, wasn't there a time in the eighties? No, people just put deodorant in their armpits, right? Yeah, you're not. What's this fucking? I know. And that's, what's you know I mean, like thing? somebody, somebody fucking double pitted to Chesty and told everybody on TV you should fucking swirl it around your head, like, and now I got to walk through yeah. fly spray all day. Like I don't think we needed to do that. Now, what is the difference between body spray and spray deodorant? Yeah, because like these guys that I, and the guy, there's one guy who does it at the gym all the time, and I think he thinks he's hooking everybody up because he goes out of the locker room and goes into the door and. You know, uh, gym bathrooms always have like double doors yeah. so that different genders can't see into each other's bathrooms. But so he's standing by the door to be away from everybody. But that means you have to walk through his fog to oh, get in man. or out. You just got too. <coughs> but I don't know. If there's if... a fog to walk through. Yeah. You've got too much on. Of course, of course, of course. But I don't know if that's body spray or if he's just spraying deodorant all over his body. I don't really know if there's a fucking difference between you never the two. The I just don't understand. Like I get sweaty elbows, bro. I don't need to fucking spray it all over me. I, I just, I don't, I know that body spray is new. I know that. Because I never, yeah, no one said, the act stuff, yeah, right? no one ever told me I should body spray. So this Dove Men Plus Care Dry Spray, that's what you use, right, Andrew? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is, this is different from Axe. This, this is only meant to, sp- do you spray it everywhere? Yeah, but you spray it all over yourself. But you don't do a across your chest <laughs> thing like, <laughs> it doesn't work though yeah how long have you been using that for yeah cause you're the sweatiest armpit guy I know I can tell what time it is by looking at Andrew's pits wow it's like a sundial I I mean I would look into another thing if you had that sweaty dude if I had that sweaty of an armpit I would look into it yeah so am I shirts. so am I I just feel like there might be some sort of deodorant that would I mean, wouldn't it be worth it to you if there was a deodorant where all of a sudden you didn't have sweaty pits the next day? Yes. Well, at least you got that in before you said it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, but you're supposed to... Okay. 
I don't wear that a deodorant anymore, but it, if, whenever I did, I knew to put a t-shirt on in a way where the bottom bit didn't touch my armpits. Yeah. You're too big. Is it? Yeah. You, you know what it is? It's because your fucking t-shirt doesn't fit. You got some fat pits. Yeah. Get a goddamn <laughs> t-shirt that fits you. Couldn't you also just put the shirt on and then stick the deodorant? I know you... Oh, uh, don't do that, that Michael. Can't Wait, you so you are pits... You are you double ch pits to chestying then. Because if you just, if you, because it's how he said, if you've already got your t-shirt on, you just go psh, in directly to your arm, armpit under the shirt, that is sufficient. It gets the whole armpit. Yeah. Don't get the white sticks. Get a, get the gel ones. I don't, and I'm a buffoon. Yeah. Your, shirt's too, your shirt's too tight. Okay. See, that skews me. Like, I, I can't stand it. Like, when my pit starts... What about if you get I a zipper it? on your t-shirt so you can zip it up? Mm-hmm. That's a thing, man. You're just wearing... Your clothes are just too damn tight. If, 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 it's if, not, if, it's if just, a garment is, like, too pressed up against my pits, I'll just start sweating. It's, it's just he's... It's like a frat thing. He's got... That's how they wear their shit, so how... That's how he's gonna wear his shit forever. He's got that... Glory yeah, or maybe it's a thing like he's he's a an extra large and he refuses to go up one, and he's just gonna if he s crumbles and buys a double X, he's bowing to the fatness. <laughs> <laughs> so you will not give up the size because then you're like, well now I, now I fit in the fucking thing, and now I can probably get even fatter. If I stay in this extra large shirt that doesn't fit me. Every day I get up and I go, God damn it, I need to lose like 10 more pounds so I can fit in this t-shirt. Soon it will happen. The ultimate weight loss regimen. <laughs> Maybe you need um, a whole uh, lifestyle makeover and you need to adopt the lifestyles of the tech elites, Andrew. What are they doing? Um, a lot of things that you do or have done over uh, the years um, uh -oh. in order to uh, maximize their ability to create the next killer app and also just work like 20 hours a day. Um, freezing cold showers. Uh, uh, you got your, your cryo. Yeah. And you got your like whole whole thirty diet kinds of things. What's intermittent, that? Intermittent fasting. Um, whole thirty is you eat whole, not at the Whole Foods grocery store, but whole foods for thirty days. Like eat an entire apple core and all. Yes, you need to eat the entire thing, right? Like you can eat pigs, but you need to eat the entire animal. Oh man. What's that? What's that? No, that's not. What it, it means not processed foods. Oh. Yeah. Well, why does it have to go to women? It's. Yeah, everybody, sh everybody should not eat processed food. It's bad for you. Well, I'm slowly learning to cook more shit. Sounds good, macaroni. I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm spraying less molten slime all over the kitchen when I make things. What do you mean molten slime? What's molten slime? Well, Andrew. Andrew talked me into getting one of those instant pot things. It's like a crock pot. Yes, I know. And you exploded and I, macaroni and cheese in it. I, was, I exploded many things. Oh. Because when, when it's finished cooking, there's a little valve you turn and then yeah. it shoots the steam out. Oh. I got the small <laughs> one because I'm cooking for me. Yeah. I tried to make a, you know, a responsible decision and buy the smaller one. Mm. Turns out that was stupid. All the recipes are a little too much for it. Mm. And I'm bad at math. So I just make them as is. And then when I release the pressure valve, it sprays fucking foam and molten shit. Sounds like all a video. The, the ceiling of my kitchen, should all over a, the place. You should do a cooking show. I'd watch that. I should. Just tell me when you're going live, buddy. I'll... Cook, cooking with the tard. Yeah. <laughs> cooking with the tard. <laughs> Sounds like that's exactly what's happening. So, yeah, go for it. But I've been getting better. I'm making stuff <coughs> that doesn't explode with steam. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. Big news. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should look into that stuff. There you go. He's going to look into it. Uh, another news, 1.5 million penguins discovered on remote Antarctic islands. So we thought they were going extinct. Now don't worry about it. There's millions and millions of them. So eat all the penguins you want. Ah, <coughs> oh, man, because they <laughs> are tasty. In hot pot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that fizz out all over the kitchen? Yeah. So That's... you really thought penguins were going extinct? Yeah, I didn't know I didn't that. I hear about that. Well, I think they've had a declining population. They didn't. They declined to a private island. 
Yeah, they well, I just, Fest Island. I just think these guys have been over here the whole time. I don't think they. I don't think the ones that they were losing were um, were moving over here. I just think that there was this whole other place that nobody had bothered to look, or maybe they were just playing hide and seek with researchers. So, do you think they moved there because the environment and the weather's changed or whatever, and they had to find a new spot? You know what I just realized? If you're a penguin, I mean, it's kind of like Vikings when back in the time, back in the day, where they would sail and find new land and discover it. I mean, these penguins were like, I mean, the land's getting you know too busy over here. Now I'm not into the west side penguins or the east side penguins. And then there, somebody was like, I'm going to crusade and try to find my own thing. And they found another fucking, like, they found a new country that they can start again that has nobody there, no the man, nobody. They got a new, could you imagine discovering new land and having to start all over again with a new community? Penguins got to. You could do that in Indonesia. And they're fucking pissed when that shit, when that fucking stupid blade thing lands on the island those penguins are like oh fuck it's only a matter of time before those dickheads show up again it's only a matter of time before Conor McGregor shows up with a a spicy chicken sandwich (laughs) that's what we all are spicy chicken sandwich sellers but there's like thousands and thousands of islands in Indonesia maybe like 10,000 islands Mm -hmm. nobody no person has ever been to all the islands in Indonesia in their their life it's impossible sounds time consuming what about an Indonesian with a boat I just don't think there would be enough time in one person's <coughs> life to get to every single one. And a lot of them are really, 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 really tiny. Uh, tiny, like, a, could you put a house on it? I'm sure there's all... Yeah, probably. I would think. Mm. You can't even count as an island. You can't put a house on it. I have a buddy <coughs> who went on a, a surf trip there, and this is, like, the most posh shit ever. They went out on the boat, and it's and uh, they had a, a chef who came with them because they're going to islands where there is nothing. They yeah. have to bring their food with them. And they would just pull up. They would just cruise around and look at islands. Whenever they saw an awesome surf break, they would uh, lower a little boat so everybody could yeah. get out and just go. And, 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 and at one point, a couple of people on the trip, there's only like a dozen people on the trip, were like, we're going to go on the island and we're going to walk in the jungle and see. And they made it like five feet in. And they were like, there's no path. There's no, you can't, it is impenetrable. You can't get fucking anywhere in this. Oh, there's probably fucking treasures in there. Yeah, that's all I thought when he said that. I'm going to get machete and a chainsaw. I'm going in there. Hell yeah. If you went with a machete and a chainsaw, well, you better bring some generators as well. But you might just be able to stay there for the rest of your life and nobody finds you. I might get one of those guns from uh, Predator. Just plow the woods down. Take that pristine, untouched nature. <laughs> That's right. A bunch of massacred penguins and everything. Just... Man has arrived. Yeah, look what I have done! <laughs> <laughs> Let's find the uh, the treasure! <laughs> just destroying everything. Penguins are pretty fun, though. I feel like they fuck, right? Yeah, they definitely fuck. Like, super into it. I mean, they got an island of 1.5 million. I'm sure there's a bunch of crazy orgies rolling around that. Uh, I just realized shit. they're probably old cousin fuckers. They look pretty inbred. They do, right? Kind of dopey in the face. Yeah, those ones look particularly dopey. Birds are not smart. Well, it does look like a fun existence. They just waddle around and dive into the water they and slide s- around on their belly. They like to ski. What about that part where they stand on an egg for like nine months and freeze? Yeah, but that's the girl. We're not I, worried I about that. The guys help. I'm joking. I was trying to be a dick. <gasps> Felt like I got it in. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I would like to be a penguin. And I'm assuming when you're out there with no pants on, you're not cold. Because you're a penguin, right? I think they can take it. I know, take it, or is it like... Do you know what I mean? Like, if I'm in a penguin and I'm on this island with all these millions of penguins, yeah. am I like, fuck, Dully. You mean cold as fuck today. Yeah, of course you are. Of course Ah, you well are. then, fuck that. I'm not... I need to be there to be like, what? Well, like, wherever... I'm you... full of amount fishes and it is hot as balls. Just think about it. Wherever you live, there's going to be seasons, so you need to be built to where as hot as it gets isn't too hot for you, and as cold as it gets isn't too cold for you. But that means on the hottest day of the year, you're like, man, it's fucking hot. And on the coldest day of the year, you're like, it's fucking freezing right now. Yeah, I think I'd rather be a panda. I mean, I know they're extinct and shit, but they just look like they're fucking kicking back. 
You know, it's different different phases in your life of different animals you want to be. No, I just <laughs> feel Google's it. Panda Express. What? <laughs> 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 I just feel like they don't have to do nothing. Here is the well-known panda, Kung Fu Panda. Uh-huh. <laughs> he enjoys doubling. So and they do those. Diet. They do those army roll things on purpose, so you know they like to play. Yeah, they have no idea they're going extinct. They're having the time of their life. Right? They spend. They don't have a lot of waking hours. And they spend over half of them eating sticks. Cool. Is it? I'm sure those sticks. Taste I mean, for them, yeah, yeah. They probably taste like fruit roll-ups. Yeah, they munch into it like they really like it. And they do barrel rolls with each other in the park and they fuck fuck <laughs> yep they fuck <laughs> and they hang off branches and shit it's cool I like them it seems like a fun life just playing with bamboo and shit seems like it really fulfills them though you know it's like we're like oh, look you play with bamboo for the rest of your life no I don't want to but I would like to if, if, if I found it really amusing every time like a panda? Yeah, for them playing with a stick is like the most fun thing we could ever imagine. Yeah, <laughs> that's the problem. I got you know, it's too spoiled. That's right. So You're you, too good for sticks now. That's right. <laughs> eh, I'm too good for bamboo. Mm-hmm. It's not right. Yeah, I'd totally be a panda. Right? I mean, apart from the bit where you're dying, but so are we. Well, I mean, the species is dying. They're not individually dying. They just aren't fucking like they should. No. <sighs> Flying's overrated. Yeah, but then you're just hanging out in the wind and shit. By yourself. Every conversation you have with someone, it's like... Rah! You're like, yeah, it has been a good day. But you can't say that. You have to go... Rah! Back to them. You got no dick. You know what I mean? They don't all fucking camaraderize. They're all like pretty lonely. Sure, you get to be like, so that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool flying around. I'm just saying, it's like a lot of work. I've got to find the worms. I've got to have fights with the rodents and stuff and try to pick them up and drop them off stuff. i got to vomit into babies' mouths. Like, fuck off. I'd rather be a land sea turtle than a panda. Land sea turtle. Land. Just a land turtle doesn't really appeal to me, and I don't want to be a straight up sea turtle. Wait, there's no such thing as a land sea turtle. You're either a sea turtle or you're a land turtle. Well, there's turtles that come up on rocks and shit and then they go back in the water. Yeah, fucking sea turtle. You can't yeah. be a sea land turtle. <coughs> sure you can. No. All sea turtles need to see. That's a turtle. You can't be a sea turtle that doesn't go in the water. No, of course you can't. But I don't want to be a turtle that never goes in the water. Okay. I want to... You want to be a turtle? Yeah, I want to be a regular, but I don't want to be one that never sees the water. Turtle? No such thing as a turtle that doesn't see the water, Michael. Okay, well then I want to be a turtle. Right. Or I'd be a turtle. Do you want to be a giant turtle, or do you want to be like a mini turtle that lives in the pond? I think the mini one's probably fine. Mm -hmm. Is it because they live a long time? Well, the other thing is, if you're a big turtle, I think big turtles live like 100 years, and then the mini turtles live like 50. Totally making that up. Plus, you you gotta sound like a bitch when you fuck. They're all like, hey. Well, that's not true. I feel like if you're the big one, the hundred prehistoric one, you're all, ah, ah, ah. I don't know. It just seems so goddamn mellow. Yeah. Like, everything that you think about pandas, I think about turtles except better weather and swimming. Yeah, I think I would rather be a turtle, not a sea turtle, because as far as I know, the only thing that turtles fear are sharks. And that means if you're a sea turtle... Okay, you're fearing them, and Chucks love sea turtles. If you're a land turtle, who the fuck's attacking a land turtle? Nobody, nobody right? Nobody wants to get inside that shell. Right, but is there an animal out there that is known for eating turtles? Yeah, they got predators. Things can rip open the bottom, for right. sure. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, because if you're a walrus, you're still shark bait. I feel like it's just shameful to be walrus. Yeah, and they fucking fear. Yeah, they're dicks that just wobble around. They do that weird thing where they stab each other with their tusks to get laid. They're gross. Yeah, and they and they're on the ground with no legs. It's the most. It's like born deaf. It, you know what I mean? Like you, you can't move on the rocks, and it's half of your life. Looks cold. You're lonely as fuck. 
there were these turtles who lived in Central Park, and I, I was jealous of them. God they damn angels. And they come out and they come out and get sun, and then they're like, "Okay, that's good. I'll go yeah. back in the water." Andrew now. might have a point though. All they're the like, walruses, they're like resort animals. All the walruses do hang out together, and they're so fat. There's no way they have cold days. No way. No, I don't think they're cold. <laughs> Wait, a polar bear can eat a walrus? Man, look at. Look at all of his buddies just watching. Not helping! Right. You all have giant spears on the front of your head! We would take one headbutt to this polar bear and he would be fucked! Well, and when we all sit down, like, in a group together in a big circle, doesn't, don't you have the walrus conversation? Okay, guys, we realize you're all completely safe in the middle. I'm the only one who's somewhat vulnerable being on the outside, so can we agree? I will sit here, I'll take my turn, but can we agree if a polar bear comes, you guys come help me? He just takes his pick! Oh, no, look, a couple of are ready to go him, though. But they're just not very good at going. Yeah, it seems like they're too stupid to realize they have gigantic sores hanging off. Well, that's not true. They're not too... No, but you would think... Yeah, that's the problem with animals, you know? They don't... I, you know, I know people say they communicate with each other, but they don't communicate with, with each other like we do. Like, you couldn't just go... You know, it would take one walk, king of the walruses... Everybody! You're a polar bear approaching! Form you know, gather around, form your fucking defense that I taught you, and stick fangs in this guy, and then nobody dies. But no, they don't do that. They all just go, ah, 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 and then they like don't help each other or themselves, and then like a bear takes his pick. You guys are fucking bitches. They're like super vampires with those teeth. Yeah, but they're so shit. I mean, if they were super vampires, they could take over the world. Those are the biggest fangs in the world. If they organize, like Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Let's do Planet of the Walrus. Planet of the Walrus. Because they can come out. In a horse in the forest. Oh goddamn! That's a strong. <laughs> that's a strong horse. <laughs> if they made Planet of the Walruses at the end of a torturous trilogy, would the walruses all just watch the humans fight each other and not actually participate in the war that's in the title of the movie? Yeah, that was a pretty unsatisfying. I, st I still ending. got beef with that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very dopey way to end if the trilogy have, yeah if they have war for the planet of the walruses will the walruses fight in the war because <laughs> I feel like you owe me that yeah There'll I agree some grizzly kills just the yeah. walrus jumping up and burying those two fucking fangs right in someone's eyeballs yeah there really is no way to go that isn't incredibly gross and, and painful when a walrus takes you what about a walrus that doesn't have big tusks boy is he fucking bummed yeah, like the needle dick of the walrus. Yeah. Thing, right, the, the micro walrus. Man, that is just a tough competitor, straight up. Those fangs are... I mean, the gods have made quite a beast. Quite <laughs> a beast. Don't you think? That is truly one of the most... When you take a step back and look at them, they are quite preposterous. Right? They're just Unbelievable. like nutsack nut monsters yeah. with horns <laughs> hanging out of their mouth. Well, they also have like the friendliest faces imaginable, coupled with two natural swords. Hanging out of their face. Weird ass, like monkey, cat, fish whiskers. What the fuck is that thing? Kind of armadillo y. <sighs> Spiky almost. Very testicle sacky. Yeah, if you thought Joe Camel was a phallic symbol. <laughs> Wait till you start smoking walrus band brand cigarettes. <laughs> Alright, well, enough of walrus. <laughs> We're gonna take a break and uh, we'll be back. <clears throat>
vaping. Vape life. Yeah, about 35. Okay. Should we try the call-in? What call in? What's been in your ass? Mm-hmm. Alright. Okay. And then if it just fails miserably, we'll just shut it down and I'll do some news just to clear it enough to potentially take different calls at the end. Yeah. Okay. Shut that door, Andrew. Cold getting in here. Cold? Yeah, it is way colder out there. <clears throat> Are you good temperature wise in here? Mm hmm.
Menschen hier? He China's here. He Cham Nasia. You can do Chinasia? <laughs> yeah, you are a treat, Andrew. Uh, uh, Zimbabwe? Yeah, I've heard of it. It's in Africa, right? It is. It yeah. is. Yeah, we're off to a great start here. Has received, uh, or annually receives about 100 million condoms. Yeah, yeah, but they don't fit because it's from a place that made them small. That's right. Because everybody in Africa's got a big dick, Michael. And um, at least according to the local health minister of Zimbabwe, who says that, thank you, China, mm. for all of the condoms you've been sending us. The problem is apparently what works for men in China does not work for men in Zimbabwe. He calls upon local manufacturers to start banging out some condoms that the men there can actually wear. Yeah. I mean, nothing worse than having a rubber in your pocket trying to practice safe sex and then you go to put it on and it doesn't fit. Because they go safe sex. Yeah. Those things break pretty easy. Especially if you're pushing the boundaries of it, filling your, filling the thing yeah, out. I, I mean, you want a comfortable one on. You get a sh one that's like maxim maxing out. You're asking for trouble. You know? I've got kids. <laughs> you don't want those. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's a big commitment. Yeah, I'm fucked. Never escaping. Will's fucked. We're fucked. He's I mean, Tully, you know, Tully thinks he's okay, but we'll see. We'll see how he goes. Yeah, wait till I get to the re-up and all this. Right. I'm fucked, ladies and gentlemen. Put a rubber on. Um, this is a story I wasn't planning on bringing up. This was just linked from the one I just mentioned about the Zimbabwe condoms. Researchers from a hospital in Melbourne... Oh, mate. ...have um, sparked controversy. Uh-oh. Because... Um, they say lots of men tell them that they are having trouble locating the G-spot. Mm -hmm. And according to these researchers, the reason is because the G-spot does not exist. What? So what am I licking? The G-spot was named after a German gynecologist named Ernst Grafenberg. Yeah. So it's probably the Grafenberg spot, or the German spot, or the gynecologist spot. There's a lot of G-words there. Who first raised... Could it be the G-G-G-G? Maybe. Who first raised awareness about it in in 1950, saying it was so sensitive to the touch that if located, women would become romantically mad. So maybe this was like... If it could be located, makes it sound like it's the fountain of youth or something. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's not that hard to find. No. Like, do you think that there... It's right on the end. Andrew, do you think that you are able to locate a G-spot? Yeah, I think I'm Kevin, do you think you know when you have the G-spot? Yeah. Right? How do you know when you've got the G-spot? How's she reacting? What? Oh, that's my G spot. <laughs> you totally, you totally got it, dude. That's the G spot that I definitely possess. As a woman. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's more my chicks. But... <laughs> oh yeah, fuck my G spot. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's why I don't need to find it that much lately. <laughs> oh, that's my pros uh, G spot. Yeah, pro spot. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of segues neatly into a call in segment that we'd <laughs> like to try. Uh, in the past, we've asked listeners, men, what are household items or things you found around your um, environment that you have stuck your dick inside for sexual gratification, mm -hmm. masturbatory gratification? What have you fucked with your dick? And then we've asked ladies, what have you fucked with your vaginas? Mm -hmm. Things yep. that you got, you know, yep. like bananas and cucumbers and candlesticks and what have you but i'm not sure that we've ever asked people even if we have i'm happy to do it again what are things that you have stuck inside your butt and i, I want to know everything that's been inside your butt and that's for sure a button you can, can i start the ball yeah. rolling uh -huh. um when i was super young i put a knife handle in my ass there you go yeah so 
uh, you know, that made no sense. I wasn't really sure what was going on, and uh, I was like, I don't you know, I don't, what what is that thing? What happens? And, you know, it not well, it's like oh, nothing. And that was the end of that. So when you did that, do you think you were at an age where you're like, if I stick this in my ass, it's going to feel really great? Or do you think you were at the age where you were curious? Or do you think you were at the age where you're not really sure why you did that? Uh, no, I thought I was going to feel really great. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I'd also love to know if people have had weird things in their ass for non-sexual reasons. I'm not sure we're going to get a ton of calls on this one way or the other. So one I'm time gonna... I had a, sorry to ball, no, ball no, the no. ball again, but uh, I lost a bet on this very show mm -hmm. and I put anal beads in my butt and attached it to a remote control car and Katie drove it off. Not for sexual reasons, Michael. I believe you. I did not receive an erection from any of that. Because over the years we've talked about, there was the Scottish, I believe, priest who fell on a potato. Yeah, he was fixing the blinds and he slipped and fell on a potato and it went right up his ass, it ladies and gentlemen. Anybody, which is so weird because why a, why a potato? I've never seen a potato that... Yeah, but he probably... You can shape a potato into a dick... Oh. Vibe. No, but I think we would have heard about that in that news story if the if the potato was like peeled and had a knob and like a urethra. Oh, I didn't. Well, maybe he didn't go to that much detail, but maybe he carved <laughs> it into slightly. Maybe he didn't have veins on the side of it or anything, but it still had like a bit of a dick shape. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it did get stuck up there. And so of course, ladies can also call for this eight five five L S forty. Please, ladies, I dare you. Eight five five L S forty one master something. I didn't get to see that. Hello. Yeah, Mr. Hands. This is Mr. Hands. How you been? Good. What's up, mate? Other than penis in my ass. Of course. Uh, I put a handle of a comb, you know, like to comb her hair. Yeah, yeah. That, that and a shaver, you know, like a you know, a razor blade. Not, not the razor end, obviously, but the, the, the handle. Right. Those are kind of ribbed sometimes, right? They are, yeah. But they're really thin. Yeah, no, I did not know that a razor would do the trick. Yeah. But obviously you'd prefer a man's throbbing cock, right? You know it. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hands. Thank you. I love you. Love you. Backdoor fucker. There it is, Mr. Hands, who... What's what Mr. Hands more, most famous for? Uh, well, didn't he just fuck his buddy in the backseat of a car while he was there were carpooling somewhere? Mm, there was a guy on the other side, right? He had to fuck a guy in between a guy or something in the back. Oh, that's Mr. Hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Mr. Hands is the guy that made his yeah, dick flaccid, yeah. but he rubber bands it and makes just the end bit hard, and he puts a mirror on the ground, and he tries to put that on his, up his own ass. So he's an innovator. And uh, John, welcome to the show. What have you put in your ass? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Ah. Uh, no, it's not. But thanks for the story. Uh, Eight five five L's forty one. I believe if you call right now, you can hear Andrew say, "What are you saying? What's up your ass?" Oh, hello, Jason Ellis show. What's in your butt? Okay. So I thought I heard. Talking butt stuff. I thought he said what's in your ass, but anyway. Franco, welcome to the show. Ah, it's an honor, Jason. Thank you. What have you had in your ass, Franco? All right, well, I had a drumstick in my ass, but it wasn't like, uh, you know, like a little drumstick. It was one of those fancy percussion drumsticks with a big wooden handle and a bunch of little sticks coming out the other end. Yeah. Hey. What? Why? Why? Did you like it? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, I was experimenting. I was, this was probably when I was a teenager, and um, I was like, yeah, it actually was really awesome, and I never was able to achieve that ever again. I haven't tried that much, but yeah, it was pretty fun. That's crazy to me that you put something in your butt so you were curious what would happen, and you said it was so great that you've never achieved anything like it since, and yet you never stuck more percussion instruments in your anus. Yeah, 
Yeah. Have you tried romancing your own ass? Yeah, yeah, I was romancing my ass. Yeah, but maybe I'm saying again, because it sounds like you struck a nerve there. I feel like you deserve to get back there. Maybe candlelight dinner yeah. or candlelight bathtub and then fuck your own ass. It sounds like you've just lost that little <coughs> feeling. Mm-hmm. Is that you putting drumsticks in your ass? Don't give up is what we're saying. Sounds like you need it. All right, there it is. Try one of those puffy end ones that they use in marching bands. Right. That's a romantic drumstick to put in your ass. And don't forget all those potatoes out there. Timmy, welcome to the show. What have you had up your ass? Hey. Uh, there's electric toothbrush and a uh, plastic ribbed um, plunger. Plunger. What you, kind of plunger? Used? Uh, no, no. Are you sure about that? You went to the store and bought this plunger for the express purpose of putting it in your ass? No, it was new and I saw it and I, I took advantage of it. So you didn't even buy it. You just saw it there and assumed it was new. Yeah. So it wasn't new. I'm assuming it's new for my own Right. Well, you got to assume that. You put it up your ass. Yeah, right. And there's, there's shit vapors in the bathroom, Michael. So there's poo. He put poo feces up his own butt, yeah, which is yeah, where it belongs. Yeah, no, I guess I guess when you look at it that way, the other one makes a whole lot of sense to me. Vibrating toothbrush? Yeah. Yeah, did that work, sir? Hell yeah, it worked. Hell yeah, it worked. There you go. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Very honest man calling the show to tell us he uh, put a vibrating toothbrush in his bum hole. Ladies, not seeing a lot of ladies out there. And I know the ladies put things in their butt. I've seen it. Danny. Hi. Hey, lady. Oh, hi, Danny. Mm. Not to you before the Barbie leg rings a bell no not maybe that just happens more often than you realize what percentage of people who got these things lodged in their ass um, just fully came clean that yeah I was I was jerking around in my asshole and it got stuck surprisingly a lot of them hmm. like 90% hmm. did anybody have a dumb story Yeah. <laughs> He yeah. had a daughter, and that, so that was his daughter's Barbie. Oh. I mean, he's making up the story, Michael. He bought the Barbie and put it up his ass. He has no kids. Thank you, Danny. Yeah, let's make it that way anyway. It makes it better for me. <laughs> I can I can exist a little easier if I know that that's what happened. Oh, uh, this is... Wait, there's... There's a couple of... Uh, wait, where are we? Some of these are pretty... Wait, an actual plunger? Derek, you put a plunger in your butt? Like a toilet plunger. How far up did you put the plunger in your butt? Eh, it's amateur hour. Thanks. Right, I don't understand what he's saying. Speakerphone, terrible. It's yeah. It sounds like he said he got up and did a little dance, which to me is the least sexy thing you can do with a plunger in your ass. Yeah, I mean everything I've ever put in my ass myself has never worked out for the um, sexual gratification wise. Like I've never, I mean, I've never had an ass where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like stroking my penis and working my ass. It's not needs to be like somebody else's job entirely. Like, it's not a pussy. It's never been. But I do see gay boys kind of act like their butt is like a pussy, kind of. Well, how do you mean that? Well, they just, like, know how to... That's, like, get, just put it in there, and they're, and, they're, and they're happy. You know? Like, that's the the G spot or whatever. A 21-year-old woman in Tennessee um, had a, a loaded gun mm-hmm. in, in her butt. Wow. Was it on safety? 
I do. I mean, not. you're not going to get that answer. No one would have asked that, I but that makes a big <laughs> difference to me. I don't know why, but yeah, she wasn't doing it for for sex. I think she was hiding it. Right. Loaded. Had to be on safety. The gun was stolen too. Well, that's where you put <laughs> stolen guns. Uh, Sean, welcome to the show. Hey guys. Hey. Uh, I used to ride half bike and Yeah. I mean, people talk about this story, and they have done, like, it's an old wives' tale, which makes me question you, but you're saying it re this really did happen to you. I swear to God. And how old were you? Uh, I was probably 13. And you had the, the, the pole go in your butthole? And really cleared on my neck. I have, my tank is one big scar. So where, where, where the gods sewed you up, then the doctors had to sew you up over that. Wait, you kept ripping the stitches open. I did. Um, I had to eat a, di a special diet because every uh, time I had a bowel movement, it was too hard. I it would rip the stitches. Oh! This sounds pretty realistic. Nonetheless, I'm going to have to ask you to take a picture of your tape <laughs> and, and include a cover, a cover of today's newspaper in the photo and send it to us. And hold, and submit to Ellis at gmail .com. hold up three and a half fingers too, okay? I'm joking, dude. Thank you. Hey, I'm going to put you on hold and send you a t-shirt, you poor bastard. Thanks for calling in. Oh. Fucking hell, man. 13. Butthole rips open. Man, that guy's tough. Doug! Welcome to the show, Doug! Thank you, Jason. And again, you guys aren't going to believe this because it's the last And you and your family choose to believe that he wasn't just violently fucking himself? When you say... <laughs> when you, <laughs> you know him to be a guy that's not a shovel fucker? That's good. Uh, what kind of handle are we talking here? Is it the one where, you know, when you can get a fist on it? Ah, oh, okay, straight handle. Because I'm always, I'm thinking about that one, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah, 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 the handle thing. Yeah. It's not going up anybody's ass. I don't care how loose your uncle is. Right, yeah, but your uncle, regardless, is loose as fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm saying he was loose before the incident and he's never been looser now. But, I'm like, you fall on a, it, I mean, through the jeans in your hole. <laughs> Man, I can't do this. Yeah. All right, all right, you win. Okay, I, I fucking feel disgusting. He is the winner. My fucking nuts just started to feel weird. God, I do still find that impossible. It just, you know, how do you make the pants? I know. But in the hole. I mean, maybe unless he had a hole in the back of his pants. I, very unlikely. Uh, Once again, that, that just raises questions about the uncle. Yeah. If that's the case. Uh, Chance, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Hey. Uh, so, I went down the slide, and there was a part of the slide that was cracked, and when I went down it, it went not directly up my asshole, but in between, like, in my paint, like, kind of, it tore my asshole, essentially, is what it did. Nice. How old were you? Uh, I would have been about three and a half or four. Oh, God. Well, I mean, your defense, you were three. Okay, even if you had seen it, really, how much difference would it make? Yeah, were you going to do like some sort of ninja flip over Great. the gap? Morons. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't feel sorry for you, but I feel sorry as hell for your parents because a three or four year old with a fucking slide injury in the asshole is like, I sorry, gotta go again. Yeah. Worst fucking phone call segment ever. My nuts feel like they don't even exist anymore. They've they've ran up into my stomach. Because I was thinking about that this morning. The bathtub in our in our place has like kind of a high wall coming out of it. And it's also just kind of wide. It's like this whole marble thing. So mm-hmm. we have. A, a handle that we stuck a suction handle on the wall so when my kid gets out he can he can hold on yeah. he's really good about holding on to it but it's wet and every single time I, I'm not in the bathroom and he gets out I'm afraid that he's going to fall but like what's going to happen if he falls he's going to like cut his chin open or I did that when I was a kid that's it's almost like a rite of passage for a kid to fall in a bath in a wet bathroom and get a couple of you know stitches in the bottom of their chin and that would be such a horrific scene to walk into and that's nowhere near the man's anus no <laughs> He's miles away. That's the exact opposite end of his body. Uh, is it Michelle? Yes. Hey, Michelle. Welcome to the show. Hey, how are y'all doing? We're good. Great, thanks. What went on your butt? Not my butt. Mm. Um, I was an ER nurse for 16 years, and I've seen quite a few things, but I have to say the most remarkable was the butternut squash of the ass. A whole one. Now, wait, it crushed it? It crushed it. I mean, once you get something up your ass, if you don't have a way to get it out, that it, it, it gets packed and starts to point, and then it's going to keep going. Going to keep going where? Now, a butternut squash, for people who don't know exactly what we're talking about, it's the thing that, it's like a gourd kind of thing that kind of looks like a flattened out pumpkin. Would you go in, stem first is the skinny... Of course you go in stem first. It's the skinnier way, but it also has the stem. Would these guys remove the stem? Fair enough. Uh, one time I was in Germany in a jerk-off booth and they were playing movies and uh, I know how they got it up there. Willpower. They just, they don't, yeah, exactly. They don't care. I mean, I saw a video of men fisting each other and then uh, uh, I put a rubber baby, like it looked like a baby but it was made of rubber and they put it in his butt and then they made it come out like he had a baby. Oh. Germany, Michael. Still, butt babies? Michael, you can buy butt babies to put up your butt. Okay? So this is the world we're living in. Thank you for the call, Michelle. Yes, right, Michelle. I'm looking looking at a guy who put a vibrator up his ass and then it went too far and he couldn't get it out and it continued to migrate north. Did he vomit it out? Because that'd be cool. No, the problem We be awesome, right? He tried to use salad tongs to get the vibrator out. Oh, and then his ass ate those. Yes. I knew it. Uh-huh. That ass is hungry. Somebody got an entire cutlery set. What? Did, was it all at once, or was it one at a time? Uh, no, okay, that is somebody who who, who uh, swallowed the stuff, and it just oh. stopped. In, in the colon. In the, yeah, exactly. 78 utensils in total. Magnets stuck inside a person whose age I don't want to repeat. Um, yeah, we can move on. Whoa! Oh. What happened? My chair moved away from me. Sorry, my bag didn't work very good today. Mark! Hey, what's up, man? Hey. What's been your butt, dude? <laughs> so, uh, I have a question about your comment first, if you don't mind. Mm. Yes, we do. Literally 100 people. Yeah, and as I was sitting here, I had time to reflect, and I've had more things in my ass than I really thought. So, I mean, what, the first thing I, I really like in my ass is a knuckle. Like, a, like, you know, like, like when it's giving me a blowjob, it's a knuckle in your ass. Sure, who doesn't love that? Yeah, what's next? Right, a nice knuckle. But, I mean, I, I've had gloves in my ass. Um, I've had a butt plug in my ass. I've had a finger in my ass. I've had a, uh, an enema in my ass. Oh, and at the animal was one time it was just because I had to, and then the second time it was just kind of kind of feels a little good when you don't recommend a nice animal for just uh, a little goofy pleasure. 
Thanks. Duly noted. Welcome. Yeah. Your house is even Everyone more. Take a minute and reflect on the things that have been your butt. Yeah, I'd rather move on. Okay. I feel like I've reflected. A Florida middle school social... Oh, oh, club. really quick. Mm-hmm. Who is Armor Hammer? Oh, Army... And what the Hammer? fuck? He's an actor. To me, he's the guy who in the social network, he played both of the twins that were like partners with Mark Zuckerberg in the beginning of Facebook. Yeah. But he does other things, right? He's been But why did he change his name to that? His name is an Army Hammer? It can't be. His name is Armand Douglas Hammer. Oh, he's in Call Me By Your Name, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was toast after that uh, man from Uncle thing didn't take off, but shows what I know. Oh, and he's also a legend in my household because he is the voice of Jackson Storm. The new up and comer in Cars Three. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's big. Yeah, he was like the only white guy in the Oscars. He was. Didn't Gary Oldman win Best Actor? Who's Gary Oldman? Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, well that guy. Yeah. But that's it. Just those two. He was also in attendance. Right, and there's the backlash against Gary Oldman. I didn't... Wait, what did Gary do? Supposedly, a couple of years ago, he was accused of, what, like, hitting his assistant in the face with a phone or something? I think that was his wife. Oh, I see. Uh, in front of their two toddlers. Oh. Toddlers don't remember that stuff. That's like my, <laughs> Not wife, funny. That's I don't... Like my wife's favorite Sorry. actor. Yeah, I met him once. Of assault in 2001 by his then-wife, Donya Fiorentino, who said the actor beat her with a telephone while their children were present. He denies their cl- her claims. Hmm. Uh, as I picked up the phone to call, uh, so as I picked the phone to call the police, Gary put his hand on my neck and squeezed. I backed away with the phone receiver in my hand. I traveled down nine one one. Gary grabbed the phone receiver from my hand and hit me in the face with the telephone receiver three or four times. Both of the children were crying. Oh. I don't know. I really have no idea what we're supposed to do with this stuff. As I've said before, if what do you say? What do you say about Mel Gibson? He was also caught making controversial comments defending accused abusers Mel Gibson and Alec Baldwin. That rings a bell. I don't recall. The, like the it just, look, none of us it's are... It's weird that he gets the award movie. and then you fry him. Like, why didn't you fry him before he was in the movie? I don't, I don't know. But that was also Yeah, right. Yeah, Kobe won an Oscar. Yeah, that's weird. What did he do? He was acting? He made, what, an animated short? Or was it just... But he didn't make it. Wait, did he make it or someone else made it? He wrote it! He wrote it! I'd be curious to hear what you thought of it. Yeah. Right, because that's what I would have assumed it would be about. Isn't it kind of like one of those? Somebody makes something happen, you get that. I don't think he calls him in. I think other you know, managers and stuff get him that award. Maybe, maybe. I also think that when it's a, a category that most people don't have an actual interest in, most voters don't have an actual interest in, name recognition goes a really long way. You know? Like if fucking... If, if Beyonce makes a chamber music album this year, she's going to get nominated for a Grammy, and there's a pretty good chance she's going to win. Right. Who the fuck's heard of the other four people? Right. So what this other shit did Gary said about Mel Gibson? So Gary Oldman, on the subject of Mel Gibson, speaking to Playboy magazine a few years ago, he got drunk and said a few things, but we've all said those things. We're all fucking hypocrites. That's what I think about it. The policeman who arrested him has never used the word um, nigger or that fucking Jew. I'm being brutally honest here. It's a hypocrisy that drives me crazy. Wow. 
Uh, Mel Gibson is in a town that's run by Jews, and he said the wrong thing because he's actually bitten the hand that has fed him. But some Jewish guy in his office somewhere... But uh, some Jewish guy in his office hasn't turned and said, um, that fucking kraut, or fuck those Germans. I see many Jews walking down the street saying that. Around here. Yeah. All my Jewish friends are like fucking krauts. That's why nobody Jewish comes on the show anymore, because Andrew's a fucking kraut. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All my Jewish friends. Lenny Kravitz will not come back. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The, the accusation shit's just really, really hard. It's going to be a lot easier moving forward because pe- things are going to be public a lot more quickly. And it just, I, just my rule of thumb, and I think many other people's rule of thumb, is if somebody if somebody got accused of pretty much doing the exact same thing by like 25 different women, I think I'm pretty sure that they did it. And yeah. if somebody got accused of doing it by one person, I say, I don't know. John Lennon. All you need is love. Beat his wife. Um, Ryan Seacrest, Sorry. I understand, was a bit of a pariah, right? That what? Was, that was a headline that I saw. What did he do? A lot of the nominees didn't want to stop and talk to him. Why? Because he's accused of doing shitty things to oh, his assistant. Man. Well, oh, man. Oh, wait, so there's actually some... I don't know. I guess there's some people who think there's some credence to that. Wait, like a, a, cele- a Hollywood celebrity was like, I'm not doing an interview with him. That is the headline that I saw. Why don't they get um, the big brown breakdown to do it? I saw he was there on the red carpet. Oh. Well, I won't give it. He hasn't done anything to the lady. I don't know, man. Why, don't, why do I feel like Ryan Seacrest is... He's just always had me fooled as such a douche that I, I would, he, I'd, be, I'd be so surprised that he was mean. I just feel, feel like he was yeah. so professional and, and like, I love your shoes or, you know what I mean? I didn't, I just, he seems like the last person that would slip and be unprofessional. I felt like yeah. when you don't have that much talent, sorry to be shitting on the guy, but, and you're so successful... That tells me that you're super easy to work with. I also just always thought that he was so gay that he didn't like women. Yeah, that was that angle too, right? Right. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Is I'm not saying that these women are liars. I'm not saying that Ryan Seacrest is a liar. I'm saying that none of us have any... have, 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 have Unless there's like a pattern <coughs> of stuff, I don't see how you can really try these people in the court of popular opinion. Yeah. Yeah, and assistants be jealous. I don't know. I, I've shit on Seacrest a million times, but that one... What did he... Um, you know what? I didn't even know what... What is the allegation? Like, sexual? Or what he mean? Wait, the penis grabbed her? And he pushed it on her. Yeah. I mean, that's a fucking really offensive thing to do. That's right, insane. Right, but that show is effectively... That show has now been a, a hit with Kelly Ripa and, like, three or four other dudes, which is to say that Kelly Ripa doesn't really need him, so why is Kelly Ripa still working with the guy if she thinks that he did it? Right. So, I, I guess, I, I don't know. I don't know. I Because she's really, a sellout. I can't get really too hung up on that. Yep. Oh, yeah, right. Slap in the butt. I remember that. That was the other thing, supposedly. Left a large welt still visible hours later. I know some people Dang. were... I didn't know he had the power to do that. I know some people um, were a bit taken aback that when he addressed the allegations in a statement, he did not name who she was and that she was anonymous, but the way that he um, he said, oh, like my long-term makeup artist or something like that, anybody who knew him knew exactly who he was talking about, that he, he basically outed who his accuser was in his statement because he put it in terms that anybody who was around him at all would know exactly who he was talking about. Okay. And that that was seen to have taken it to a certain level yeah i don't know who fucking knows i don't know i'm not really uh obviously don't think that anybody should be uncomfortable or harassed or worse in in their obviously but i can't spend i don't spend any time worrying about things that i never possibly yeah i'm not having nightmares about so ryan seacrest no i didn't catch any of the red carpet i guess that's the bit that i jesus christ i only saw the awards and you know francis mcdormand the lady you like she got her oscar stolen briefly but then they found the culprit. They got it back, right? Yeah, they have like a picture of the guy, I think, holding the Oscar. So he's not the, the smoothest criminal. I wish I... <laughs> okay. No way. Awesome. 
Yeah, that is. And I think cool. that she said, "Don't do anything to the guy," which is which is the correct uh, response. It's actually kind of awesome. Well, I like her. She's a really nice lady and a sensational actress, and I'm happy that she won. Yeah, I think I agree. Uh, what else? Everything else is just weird and weird. A guy shot himself in the head in front of the White House. Yeah. It seemed like he may have been a little bit off. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean. I get the message. A Florida teacher was fired after it was learned that she hosted a white supremacist podcast. Now, I haven't had a chance to listen to her podcast. She swears that the entire thing is blatantly, obviously tongue-in-cheek and that she's so anti that that she made it. Yeah. And she, like, retweeted a bunch of shit from white supremacist yeah. people. And she's just like, I'm super... I, I think also on the podcast at one point or on her social media, she was like, as a Florida middle school teacher, let me tell you like why we can't let the Japs take over or whatever the fuck she said. So yeah. you just can't live on the edge like that when you're a grammar school teacher. I guess not. I don't, I would not be comfortable. Call me a prude. I've been called that and worse. I would not be comfortable with my son's uh, kindergarten teacher hosting a parody white supremacist podcast. Fair enough. I <laughs> that's, enjoyed... just, that's just the way I was Fair, I mean, that's you, man. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Uh, everybody, enjoy the rest of your day. We'll be back tomorrow. Don't die.